<laughs> Call this meeting to order at uh, 6.32 and, uh, oops, nope, heard a door. Please silence your phones and if any of you have picked up the agendas, if there's other information you need, it's there for you. So please let us rise for the invocation and the pledge of allegiance. <clears throat> and Anne is going to have our invocation this evening. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, for our PID board and staff, and for members of the public present here tonight. Most of all, thank you for your son, Jesus, whose birth we celebrate this time of year. Please guide us as we make decisions here tonight. In Jesus' birth, we're blessed, and in his name we rejoice. Amen. Amen. Salute and pledge. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. <coughs> Roll call, please. Director Marshall? Here. Director Ann Rice? Here. President Dan Whitmer? Here. Vice President Cliff Jacobson? Here. <coughs> and Director Bill Kellogg is absent at this time? Nobody's heard from him. <coughs> yeah, did, did anybody get Coming? an indication that he wasn't going to be coming? Uh, no. All right. Should we call him? Hope he's okay. Okay, approval of consent calendar. Anybody have any questions or comments? I do have one quick question. Grant writing services, how is that coming? Um, that's, that's for the uh, conclusion of, of her grant services through that OES grant. Okay. So right now it's in the hopper, and okay. uh, they were looking for shovel ready. Uh, kind of changed the game plan on us uh, at midstream. So, uh, but we are still in, uh, have available, we're still of, have needs that mm. are still in the hopper, and we're just waiting to see if maybe our grant will be approved. Okay. Any on the board have any questions? Yeah, I had flagged that one also. I, I we talked before about the benefits of having a grant writer, and, and uh, I'm just, I'm kind of curious what we've achieved lately from the grant writer as compared to what we've expended. So. Yeah, there hasn't been much uh, success uh, recently. Um, years ago, we got about a million and a half worth of grants. Before that, we got about $750,000 worth of grants. Is that from the same individual? Um, I don't <coughs> know who wrote those grants, to be honest. That was early on in my, my career here, so about eight years ago. Um, grants are hard to get currently, so, um, especially if they're not shovel-ready. Yeah. And um, so there hasn't been much success, but I do feel like she did a, a really good job for us on this. I'd be, I'd be curious if maybe by the next board <coughs> meeting, maybe you could find out who wrote the other grants that were successful, if sure. that was this firm and her, or if it was somebody else. Okay, I can do that. Just yeah, curious. Definitely. Because okay. I've been on the board now going on two years, and I don't think I've seen anything except expenditures on that, and I know it's been questioned. Yep. There, has, there has been zero grant money is received currently. Um, so. No, I, I'm just saying, you know, it might be kind of nice just to look at it and see if they were responsible for the other grants that we actually did get or sure. for somebody else. Yeah, I can take a look at that. Okay, you. thank you. Yep. See, back in the old days, many grant writers were paid a percentage or something after a grant was actually achieved. <coughs> Not any more these days because they're, they're so skinny and hard to get, I guess. So. Yeah. Any more questions from the board? Open to the public. Any questions from the public in regards to this item? Uh, there's no. None. <laughs> Welcome. Good evening, Bill. Glad you could make it. Okay. The chair would like to hear a motion, please. I'll make a motion to approve the consent calendar. Second, I'll, anyone? I'll I'll second second that. It's been moved and seconded to approve I'd the consent calendar. i like to take something off of it. <laughs> Sorry. Invoice of uh, Syrah. Okay, the, okay, well, we're still talking <laughs> about that right now. That's what we've been discussing. That's what we were discussing. Okay. If you've got a question, go ahead and just ask. Okay. I just thought at one time we were going to pay them when they actually brought in a grant money, and we've been paying out thousands of dollars and haven't sent any grants. I did just bring up speed. I, did, I questioned that, and I asked Kevin. I, 
uh, tasked him with coming back to us on whether or not this firm or her were responsible for the prior successful grants or if we've actually achieved anything from her and then we can look at that again when we get that information maybe at the next board meeting as far as I know the last there's been two of them and this is the second one grant writer haven't gotten any grants they're hard to come by none none at all See, and that was also something that was mentioned is that back in the old days, grants were when they were available, grant writers would give a charge a percentage. They wouldn't charge unless grants were actually received. But these days, they're harder to come by, and so they have to charge for their services. Well, I just don't, we put out a lot of money for it. When we originally agreed as a board to go to the grant writers, mm -hmm. with this stipulation at that time, it was ignored after Doug passed away, is that we wouldn't do any more business if they didn't produce something. In other words, we weren't going to pay for their time to go explore <coughs> for grants. And so we've been doing this for two years now, or at least we started the, this year paying the grant writers without any grants. And then this gal came up. I think I actually was part of the reason she came to work here. Or we contacted her. But at any rate, the same thing's occurring. In other words, we're putting out thousands of dollars, and we're not getting any grants. We're getting a hopeful grant that so far all we've got is hope. May we, would it be a good idea, Bill, do you think, to agendize it for the next uh, meeting to discuss the possibility of terminating these services? Yeah, I, I think we need to, we're giving instructions to the talking to management and, yeah. and out of the visits back and forth to give okay. Or come up with a policy on this. Okay. Maybe we'll end up paying out money like this because mm -hmm. of what you just said. I don't know. I'd like to ask one more question. Do, do we have them on retainer and they just yep. go out and look for grants for us, or do we ask them when we're looking for a specific grant to do the research on it? They're out there looking for grants for us, and then they come back to us to say, hey, this grant looks like it's a possibility. And then we say yay or nay. This grant that we're paying, this, this invoice has been a grant. They've been working on this grant for over a year on this specific grant. Um, it's been a long one. And it started out as a just kind of a FEMA grant. And then she got all the way, th almost halfway done. And then the spillway incident happened. And then we got promoted to a higher level, which created more work but you but it, your likelihood of getting that grant just went up because now you're in a disaster area and so we were in a, we thought we were in really good shape for that but it took us a long time to kind of jump through the hoops because a lot of it had to do with the a zone pipes pipeline which we had a lot of iterations we got somebody on board to get detailed information uh, the generator was easy, and then they wanted to just, just do seismic testing on uh, certain areas, and then the creek crossings. So, so there was a lot of research that had to go into there to prove out that we needed these <coughs> funds for these specific things. So it kind of drug out. Well, as that drug out, other disasters happened in other areas, and then they started to say, well, we were looking for 90-day shovel-ready projects. So therefore, you're obviously based <coughs> on your research and your engineering and where you're at in your project you're not 90 days out shovel ready therefore now you're going to be downgraded on your grant and so that's where it's in the holding pattern could, could we possibly um, move this to our next board meeting then in the meantime wait have you well, okay. well we have requested these and this is a bill we can't just say sorry we're not going to pay you that's we have well, to well, follow no, we, through we with have this. to pay for what's <laughs> So, oh, that's what this is. No, I get that. And then that's the reason I suggested that we possibly pursue it next time. What I'm, what I'm yeah. saying, though, is, is maybe if we could know the pluses and the minuses of the whole thing so we could take a real in-depth look at going forward. So what I'll continue. do is if it... Uh, agendize it next time. Yeah, so we're going to agendize another topic that would be grant writing services and the history of that OES grant Correct. and what, where, how it went about. Yeah, like it. Does okay. that sound good? I like that. I like it. I'll yeah. withdraw my complaint or take it yeah. out of the consent calendar. Okay. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we approve. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Public participation. It is Mr. Ward. 
Uh, good evening and uh, Merry Christmas. Merry Same Christmas. to you. Happy too. Uh, I have a couple of things that I'd like to cover. I think I can do it in, uh, in five minutes or less. Uh, first, I think I'd like to say something in the way of praise for the way this uh, council and this uh, board has been directed by uh, Director Kellogg as president uh, because there's been a world of difference over the past several months from what the public has experienced here. And in the same regard, congratulations to Dan Wentland. I believe that his background and experience in leadership and uh, board presidency will garner thus the public an increased level of that same element. In other words, we are getting this board to be responsible to the public, and we appreciate that. So I would just say, you know, as the public goes, what we experienced before was contentiousness on the board, and that has decreased dramatically. Uh, disrespect to the public from the board, that has decreased dramatically. And disregard for the public's comments, and that has decreased dramatically over the last several months. And I just, on behalf of the public, I just want to say I really appreciate that on behalf of what this board has done. Uh, also, a comment about Aqua Hawk. Because of my work with the Water Conservation Committee, I've been doing some follow-up and research on possible brochures on what a demonstration garden brochure would look like. There are several of those around. I've requested information from some of those places. But one of them I was directly familiar with was the Dublin San Ramon Services District. This place has done a great job both in public education and in uh, drought tolerant uh, 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 the drought issue education. Uh, and so while I'm communicating with them, I ask how they're doing with Aquahawk. They have a 52% rate of sign-up, and that's since wow. 2014. Quite a bit better than us. Wow. So I was curious, what's the difference? Well, the difference is every single person, every customer that contacts Dublin San Ramon Services District, they get a comment from that representative about Aquahawk. Are you signed up? If you haven't signed up, let us explain it to you. Everything is based around you need to be connected with Aquahawk. And I think that's pretty good. I don't know if our staff is doing that or not, but that's a great idea. And lastly, um, over the, the, the period of since we last met here, I have had three occasions where I've uh, been either requested or required to, to, to speak on some of the things that I'm involved in, one of them being public issues. And I cannot not comment on what we're doing here in the way of this garden. And the feedback I'm getting about that is overwhelming. So the next step for me is that at the end of January, I will be attending a special meeting of the State Garden Club, the California Garden Clubs Incorporated, which will be held in Thousand Oaks. And the president of the club has asked me to speak on what it is that we have done here in the way of educating the public on drought-tolerant planting and a demonstration garden. And I think this is pretty cool. It's 21,000-plus people that are members of the State Garden Club in this state. So, and we have several people from Nevada, Oregon, and Washington that attend our, uh, our annual meetings. Uh, so I've been asked to cover that. So I'm garnering more information about what we're doing, providing some pictures, et cetera. And you know what? We're on the map. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Thank you, Board. Thanks, Thanks Board. Congratulations on that. That'll be neat for you. Anyone else? All right. Moving on, number four, staff billing and reports. Kevin. Uh, yeah, I'll open it up to questions. You have the, the staff and billing reports. Uh, Jim Ladrini's here. He can answer questions for you on the uh, field staff. Uh, and then uh, Mickey is here also to um, also answer questions on the IT customer service side of, of issues. Pages in on? iPad twenty three. I love to see that uh, leak history keep going down and down and down. It's wonderful. <laughs> I wanted to ask about how many fireflies. It looks like they're going up, and how we're how they what is happening to them, Jim? It appears that when we get uh, these cold snaps, uh, some of those older uh, faulty years. Datamatic previous lessons that we learned are kind of crashing. We're kind of looking back at batteries again, hmm. uh, but when, when we interrogate them, they're at no calm, no communication. And so the high number that you see right now, we can attribute uh, pretty directly to the cold snaps. There were a couple of really cold days there that we ended up with 100, 106. In a three-day reporting period. That wow. 
I had I had that highlighted as well, <coughs> and it looks to me like it's the winter months and the summer months when it's dry, relatively low, um, and I'm curious if it's not due to cold and maybe due more to moisture, and if we can do a better job of sealing those units. Well, both of you know when we did the whole research uh, that there, Cliff, we opened a lot of those and they're dry inside, and. Um, they're not supposed to do that. I mean, they're supposed to be sealed. They've got a, a gasket on them. They're not wet inside. If you, if you look at the days that we see those uh, non-reporting temperatures are down. So it could be, I mean, maybe, maybe it is. But I will go back to, if you recall, when I gave my last report on the fireflies or the mm -hmm. MIUs, it was the ones with the 125 serial number that went directly back to the vendor that we had quality control and all the parts with. Mm -hmm. And those are the ones that are failing. Mm -hmm. I, I'm curious when we open them up, maybe we could put one of those little dissicant packs in there just in case. Throw, throw, throw a yeah. in they're there. Very, they're very inexpensive, and if, there's, if it is a humidity issue, <laughs> That could fix that. So if we could, if it is, and we could do that, that might be a way to solve that. Um, when we go to them, if they're not reporting, because we'll, we'll ask them to report certain periods of time, mm -hmm. and normally it's a three-day, we'll look at a three-day window, and then we'll ask it for a five-day, because usually when you get it a three-day, you might be able to wake them up and get it in a five-day, you go out, there are almost all no communications. So if you can't communicate with them, yeah. Now, are these ones that were had been opened up before? No. These are all virgin? They're, they're the ones that were originally installed. Okay. So, and also, I mean, we're getting up in eight, eight years on that system. Yeah. And, we, you know, we talk about that and we learned that those batteries are expected to be good for about uh, 10 years. Um, but when we look at the battery levels... They're still, some of them are marginally bad, but if you can't communicate with them, you can't tell what's going on. <clears throat> mm -hmm. okay. For the benefit of the public, uh, that, that was Jim Ladrini that we just addressed and gave us an answer. Jim, Jim, I got a question. Uh, you know, now that we're recruiting or interviewing these uh, three utility workers, um, and I was talking to Kevin today about this a little bit. Um, and I, I think the board is kind of, uh, we're all on board for a pipe replacement. This really, that's probably a priority for most of us here, I think. I'd like to see those utility workers uh, used for a ongoing pipe replacement crew. In other words, almost year-round, uh, if we could do that. That's kind of what I'd like to see. So, uh, I, again, I'm just speaking for myself, but maybe, I, maybe there's some agreement here. But... Uh, I think that would be really beneficial for for our district. And you look at you look at the uh, the weather we just had. I mean, we had a really uh, dry you know November, October. Of course, it was extremely dry. I mean, I know Country Club we wrapped that up in October, but we could have we could have kept going. You see, if we had the the person power and a crew, you know, we could start another project. Um, and, and I'm not saying I, I get I get it. You know, when there's bad weather, we're going to have to maybe stop for if it's raining cats and dogs for two weeks but uh you know this is something that i think i'd like to see anyway a, a <laughs> ongoing year-round almost uh I, I would as well and i've thought about that over the years and i think that we actually have um the ability to do that and i don't want to over speak but i've been working on a plan and kevin's aware of it he's yep. directed me to work on a plan uh, to bring to you to bring to the board about something like that because I think that if we're able to, and we're going to talk about it in a little bit, leak detection, there are several components <laughs> to what we do operationally in the field that we can tie together and even in inclement weather, mm -hmm. uh, we can attack some of that and keep that <coughs> going and not necessarily in these big two or three or four thousand foot jobs, but maybe in several three or four hundred foot jobs or two, a couple exactly. of two hundred foot jobs or something like this. And again, I don't want to go into much detail, um, but I like that idea. I'm a fan of that idea. I think there's other support on it too. And, uh, but we want to dial it in and I'd like to, to, I'd like to be presenting that um, 
to Kevin in the next month and a half or so. It's a big venture. It was a lot more than I thought <laughs> at first. Um, there's a lot to it, but it's very possible. So I appreciate okay. what you're saying. All right. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate you looking into that. Thank you. By the way, Mark, thank you. That's in the comment time later. That's what I was going to mention also. So maybe we can request uh, at your convenience, Kevin, as you work with Jim on this, let's get this agendized and so the board can, coming into the new year, have a pipe replacement program going. Because, yes, you're, you are right, Mark. All, pretty much all of us agree with that. So. Well, we got, we, uh, we're working on the... Uh, Kind of the components of it of how we would see the pipe replacement go forward mm -hmm. um so i will we'll, we'll see where that is in the next uh, for the next board meeting if not probably february maybe we can probably february would be better um sure i'm still you know i'm still 50 60 percent through uh the process so february would be good and then we also have to keep in mind that we do have uh, the one project uh, slated for completion, and it's actually a fairly complex uh, project. So, but I don't think that we want to um, switch gears, you know, before we complete that. Maybe in the process of working on that, would be sure. Yeah, that makes sense, Jim. Well, again, that's the reason to be appropriate to ask them. Now that you know that it's a prime interest for us, you do it as soon as you can. We're, sure. It wouldn't be appropriate for us to yeah, demand yeah. that it be next month. So. Yep. We'll, we'll get it back to you guys, and we'll have we'll have a good good explanation, and have our all, all our ducks in a row. Yeah. We're open to ideas. <laughs> I had a question, uh, Jim uh, Pasanisi is here, but maybe you might know the answer to this, Kevin. On page thirty-one. Um, Jim's report states the uh, um, work he's doing with the um, California Rural Water Association for integrated water resource management planning. Did you, you have any idea what kind of capital projects that we might uh, work with them on that he was yeah. talking to them about? We stuck, we stuck a lot of our big ones in there. Um, one of the biggest ones we stuck in there was a new dam. Um, oh wow! Yeah, um, and uh, and then we we stuck in there like the recycle project, and I don't I don't think we stuck the B res in there because I think that's pretty much already funded. Um, but we looked at a lot of the big the big boys uh, that we were that we have out there to see what kind of <clears throat> regional planning they can bring forward and come together with. So yeah, okay. yep. thank you. If we're on this, uh, if we're on the treatment staff report, I guess I would. I was kind of hoping Jim would be here tonight, uh, the other Jim, because I had a couple questions. But does anybody know, Kevin, maybe you know, uh, we're holding off on doing the polymer testing. Are we waiting until we have turbid water? Is that why we're waiting? Or are we not doing it because we have turbid water? That's a great question that I cannot answer. So I'm not sure why he's holding off on that one. Currently. I think it's he's waiting till he has difficult water to treat to test That's it. what I'm hoping yes, it, that's it why. was, because... Makes sense. That, that's when we have the yeah. biggest issue, and that's when the right. polymer would be stressed the most. Yeah. So right. That's, that's the answer I was hoping for. And the other question is, I noticed we're 2.9 million gallons per day versus 5.2 last month, and it's uh, that's such a low projection there. Um, I, I'm wondering, did we, when we were talking about holding off on rates, were we anticipating these low of gallonage per day in our – okay, I just want to make sure of that because that seemed like an awfully that, low – It drops off dramatically right there in that, uh, in that break. You'll see it really pop down. Mm -hmm. But you actually – the funny thing is it's popped back up. Yeah. So we've seen a little pop back up to where I think they – in the staff, he said about four. They were running about four. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So is that 2.9, that was really alarming. I thought, wow. Yeah, no. <laughs> not very much water. We got, we got a little rain in November, but yeah, now December that. has been very dry. Yeah. So. yeah, so now we're getting that pop back up that we rarely ever see. And so, yeah. But but on the I'll show you on the consumption report. Uh, you'll see that we, we are above um, – budget on consumption revenue. Okay. And then yeah, the last question I had was on that MPDES permit regional board meeting on the 8th. Mm -hmm. uh, refresh my memory, what is it they adopted now? They were, they were uh, requesting a time schedule order extension um, 
for another two years, and it was a consent item, and it was approved without. And it, so contesting. that was approved. Yeah. It was pr approved. Okay. Yep. All right. And it was approved. Yeah, without any Good. contesting. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Um, oh wait a minute. Let's see on the back side here. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, on the uh, on the boat launch grant project. Yep. Do do we have their response yet on our? <laughs> now I got an email from Leo, who is the head on there. He says that he's hoping to get something back to us in January. And then what my plan is is once he gets his responses back, we're going to call the committee back in and let them look at the responses and also let look have Emily look at the responses so that okay. she has an understanding of any caveats that she wants to kind of give to you guys. I was just curious because it seems to be one of those things that just keeps hanging. Oh, it's hanging. <clears throat> it's hanging. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Patience. It's three of you. Bill, do you have any comments? No, I don't. Other than I'd like to get warm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm shivering for some reason. I've got one question on page 39. A decline in the lake permit. Is this, uh, does anybody looked into the trend for that? Is it because a lot of the older gentlemen that are fishermen are dying off and the younger generation just not fishing? Uh, what's that going to drop down to with time? You know, I, I have no idea what, what the... But the I can, I can give you an answer, I guess, to the, this decline. Uh, we've actually been expecting it uh, because the 2015 was a drought here, and it turned out our lake was one of the few lakes that had enough water and fish in it. Hmm. For me, a lot of people came here, hmm. and then as the water came back, our usage started going down. Oh. And Makes sense. That's, in other words, the streams are flowing and the lakes are full and there's plenty of places to fish now huh. compared to that year. So in other words, we yeah, were just a happened. coffee shop that they'd stopped in and nothing else was open well, to get a sandwich, right? Yeah. Rate, it went up very dramatically and that's the, what we talked about at the time. That's what happened and now it's going the other way. But it isn't falling off back to where it was in 2014. So we still have picked up new customers at the lake. Yeah, with the kayaks and everything else that we got involved with. Thank you. So Mark is saying yes. He's nodding his head. Is, are we going over the engineering report? Right now? Is that what we're if that's Maybe. within. That's, yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, I've got actually, a question on that. Please. I, I'm sorry. Were you done, Bill? Mm -hmm. Okay. On uh, page 41, could you explain the engineering staff continued work on B, B expansion project staff also continued work in support of Annex A. Okay. Then staff investigated the impact of proposed changes to time of use energy charges and the impacts to solar energy feasibility. Could you explain that to me? Sure. So that we, we've been looking at solar for a while. What happened to that guy that was supposed to respond? Well, anyway, didn't they? Uh, it, it, the, the problem is space. We're still looking for space on that, on that issue. Um, but Neil was investigating that they are actually, um, if you don't, if you didn't apply, if you didn't put your application in by a certain time period, then you were going to be under the new rules of time of use rules. And the time of use rules were sliding so that you weren't going to get that big bang for your solar because you were going to still be high peak when, when it was dark out. So you were going to be using high peak thing, uh, energy when you weren't producing solar, which therefore brings your solar down in, val or in value because you're not getting the biggest bang for your buck and you're sliding that uh, off-peak up. So when, when the sun is out, it's off-peak. So therefore you're producing at off-peak hours. So he was looking into it to see if maybe we should just put our application in and see if we could secure the, the, the ability to still use the old rates. Uh, back there, and st even though we don't have a specific project going on there, right now. There's still some money coming out of the uh, uh, ag part of it for this. You'll see all these solar installations and farms up and mm -hmm. down. Uh, and there's been some subsidies involved in that and low-cost loans from, uh, among other agencies, and RCS. And I don't know what, there's a whole office full of, of agencies for financing and things like this for farmers. And it's if we could 
get enough ag users, then we could possibly fudge. They're <laughs> <laughs> called thing. Krebs. They're, they're low energy, uh, clean renewable energy bonds. They're called Krebs, and they're, they're out there. We've looked at them. So. There's, there's a company I got some literature on um, about a year ago, and they contract with water districts to put solar arrays on the body of water. Now, I know it wouldn't work on Paradise Lake because we're out there boating and everything, but on Magalia Reservoir, uh, they they basically put it in, maintain it and everything, and you get the credit for it. They basically are buying your space to float solar to put back into PG&E. We've looked at that, and it's such in a hole with sur with the trees surrounded. It's, you don't it's have a, enough sunlight. Yeah, yeah, it's difficult. About, yeah. It's difficult. I wonder about that. Okay. Well, it also has stumps in it from when the trees were cut originally. Yeah. Being underwater has preserved the stumps. We can just mount to them. <laughs> <laughs> is there is there a Not deadline like that December one. Right. For that? Well, that was my yeah, question I, on that. Thank I you for you for your oh. explanation there. Okay. Yeah, our questions now go from page twenty three through fifty five. So. So I don't have a question, but I just wanted to comment on the IT report to uh, thank Mickey for her fine work on the communications plan. Thank you. So. Yeah, I got a, a note here saying very cool on the side here when you, where you got the uh, credit card payments and all that kind of thing. So very cool. <laughs> Thank you. So just, just a, a, a little customer service update is that we do now have re recurring bill payments now. So someone can put their credit card in there and it'll automatically bill their credit card every month, which is a new feature. And then we have... A, they can pick the date. And they can pick the date. Yeah. And we have a quick pay feature now where you don't even have to have a, a user ID. You don't have to sign up. You can mm -hmm. just go in there and quick pay if you have your account. Um, and then um, Aquahawk now is mobile friendly. So you have mobile, we have a mobile site yeah, that's, that's mobile friendly. It's like the IT month. Really, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. so exciting. It's like, and we're and we're integrating. <laughs> we're also in, in, we're also integrating uh, Aquahawk with our with our uh, regular website, so it, it, it's seamless. So there's not a different website. It's all one, and it's one unique user ID. So you log in, right? Yeah, That's where we're headed. Single sign-on. Sign so you sign on to. Uh, PID, you're, you're already signed in for mm -hmm. AquaHawk and vice versa. Oh, that's good. Yeah. You can tell Dublin San Ramon that we'll have 100% <laughs> registration. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> yes, Bill. Mark, I'm not going to pronounce his last name right. Spr Spries or something. He's he's on our. Spies? Spies. 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 Oh, Mike Spies. Spies. Or Spies. Okay. Spies. 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 Sorry. At any rate, he's on our. Uh, Conservation Committee is a volunteer, and he's the one that's putting in the sprinkler system, all the different systems up there for the garden. But he likes to tell a story that he was in Hawaii, and he checked his uh, phone and found that Aquahawk was doing it, and then he called the district and found out, and then he sent a neighbor over or a family member, I don't remember which, and they turned the water off for him. So we were, that's been a couple of months ago when that occurred. So he's one of the fans now, huh? Yeah, and he's really, oh, yeah, Aquahawk, we need to, but we need to get more people signed up on it just the same. Is everybody on the board here signed up on it? I am, but it irritatingly sends me a message that I have a major water leak every time I irrigate my landscape. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your threshold? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm not, so I somebody... I have a 48 station controller. <laughs> so there's ways to defeat Aquahawk, huh? is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I need well, to have you come and show us something. I don't have either. Oh, you... oh, good. That makes me feel less Did bad. Did we... Uh, uh, I, actually, I think it goes to page 56, doesn't it? I wanted to ask about the no. district manager recruitment. 55 is 5, yep. but that's yeah, all right. Yeah, 55 is staff billing. <laughs> then we go into yeah. Kevin's report. 5 starts here. Oh, that's me. Yeah, wait till me. That's yeah. the district manager report. Are we right. skipping around here? Or? Okay, any more questions on four? If none, Do you have any public. Questions? Nobody? Uh, no. Okay. And then I'm going to wait until after your next one, just in case. Um, so, motion, please. I move that we uh, accept the staff and billing reports. I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded. 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Okay, district manager's report first, just in case there's something in there. Yep. Um, you have my re written report. Uh, I can walk through each one of the little items, but our water rights, uh, which we we've still have not gotten a response from them about a sit down with them about uh, going <coughs> the uh, enforcement issues. We've responded to them. They haven't responded back to us. So it's kind of a holding pattern right there. North Lake boat launch, I need, still need to get in touch with SP, and I talked to Mark about that today, about getting a price for that 27 acres that they have out there. So uh, that's my Just what I was going to ask you. <laughs> you, you we talked I got a couple of months ago. We read your mind, Bill. I didn't see it in your report. <laughs> I will get that. I will get that. Okay. Uh, process water re recycle project. We've had our kickoff with Larry Walker, and they are working on uh, – getting all of our data to them. And so they're digesting all of our data. And I believe that they're planning on doing a mixing zone study uh, this spring or summer. Uh, B-Res design, you've had a pretty good idea of where that's at. You've been up to speed with, uh, with them. And they're working forward to get uh, the final draft to you. Spillway investigation, we've had uh, Gentera out for, they were out here for about 10 days on site doing uh, investigation work, and now they've kind of taken all that data back and they're working on the data itself. Um, I believe they thought that they would be done in about February ish on the phase one of that. Uh, PGE, um, we've worked through getting some more data from them. Uh, you guys have signed the non-disclosure agreement, and so we are the confidentiality agreement, and so we're, we're working forward with that. District manager recruitment. I'm out of the loop on that one, so I'm going to hand <coughs> it over to Geor Georgiana, and she can kind of give you an update on that. So Kauf, the first week that it was posted, Coffin and Associates received uh, seven app mm. applications for the position, and so... And they said that they would get weekly updates, but it would, apparently there hasn't been any mm -hmm. new applications that have been submitted since then. Thank you. So, yeah. And it closes January 16th. Mm -hmm. So I told um, <coughs> Director Solik and, and Rice that I you know, could send you updates when I get a, a new update. Just shoot you an email. Thank you. Know, yeah, great. Thank you. <coughs> what, no, you had a question. When will we have a chance to review those uh, applications? When will that be presented to us? It's all done. I'll give uh, Richard a call to see, you know, ahead of, plan ahead of time, you know, if he wants to come up. I'm not sure when he can come up and present them to you. They've already started putting uh, a bite, well, putting all the resumes and the applications together. So I imagine they would prepare a binder for you know for each of the board members to review and then okay. go over with you. They've already started. They have a ranking process, so they've already started ranking the candidates. Right. Okay, so we'll have oh, it, yeah. <clears throat> we'll have ample time to review all that before right. it comes towards mm -hmm. us for a decision. Okay, all right. And typically, you don't receive any of those until it's closed. So they'll wait until they've received all the applications and the closing date. Then they'll compile. They'll probably do a paper screening. I yeah, they have to do pre-screening. And if there's anybody on paper that doesn't meet the requirements of your posting, they'll set those aside. And then they'll come up to you and say, here's who we think you should interview. Here's the ones that we don't think you need to interview. That's all I have. Any other questions from the board? Uh, um, let me... Oh, oh from the recruitment, I'll finish out my report, uh, the retirement plan selection. We've actually, this has been taking quite a bit of my time um, because their ICMA is having a real hard time getting data from FTJ. And so we've been going back and forth with them. And I try to be the intermediary to try to get the information out. And so, and then we've been looking at plan uh the plan docs, those went to Emily, and she got those back to me. Those went back over to them, and I think they accepted all of our changes. And then... Um, we're also looking at fund selections, and I've been working through the fund selections with an outside uh, person that is r r uh, kind of ranking them and making kind of vetting the fund selections. And then once I get that done, I will bring those to the selection committee to let them look at it to make sure that they're they're good with that. And then the retirement plan audit that's been 
also uh, taken up some of my time. But um, Dan O'Shea is our is our auditor, and he seems to be right on it. He's working very well. Um, and then, but and FTJ is actually working very well with him. So it took a while, but they finally got through to them uh, to to allow uh, the person who did the calculations to talk directly to Dan O'Shea. But Dan did his calculations beforehand, so he did a lot of the pre-work, came up with his idea of what he felt was the proper thing before he even reached out to FTJ. So very much kind of. Uh, hands off, and then now he's working with FTJ to kind of compare the calculations back we, to each other. We team. have two auditors working. Is that what you're saying? No, he did. He did his calculations independently before he saw any of FTJ's calculations. So he came up with his idea of what the calculation should well, be before he, FTJ's. And now he he's working with our books for last year. He's going through that. Is that <clears throat> no? This is the retirement plan audit. Yeah. Yeah. So he's re he's. He is auditing the retirement plan calculation for the fees that were uh, incorrectly charged and the return on the... What, what's the other auditor in Southern California do? That's what the auditor in Southern California Oh, that's do. the auditor in Southern California. I had him mixed up with our... Yep. Because you talked about uh, the retirement for the district, I thought. Yep. No, different. No, the yeah. we, we're, we're retirement moving plan. retirement plans and then we're auditing retirement plans. Okay, we've started on our audit for the district. Uh, that's going to happen in, uh, in January. It had to be postponed due to the holidays. Oh, okay. Because we're I know we're six far months out. into the new year and I we haven't audited our books. Okay. Any further questions for staff? <laughs> if none, public, please. Back on page 56, um, if I can just <coughs> ask a question here. Uh, top <coughs> paragraph, last sentence. Below the Megalia before the November 1st. Is it the town of Megalia, the Megalia Reservoir, before the Megalia what? Below the Megalia Dam, sorry. Dam. Dam. Is the word missing Dam. there? Dam. Mm -hmm. Okay. Dam, um, I missed the word. Re yeah. re retirement <laughs> plan selection paragraph, the second sent the estimated transition date, it, January 18th? <coughs> the date? Sorry, is. Is? Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Senator. Type in a little bit fast there. I thought that was Ann's job. <laughs> falling down on the job. <laughs> really? Thanks, Warren. All right. Um, any further questions? If not, then we have a motion. This one we don't. Oh, that's right. That's right. Information that's only. I'm sorry. Okay. If, with y'all's approval, I'm going to bring 10A forward and so that Mr. Ladrini can go home sooner. So, Jim, would you please... Come and talk to us about 10A. 10A, leak detection equipment purchase. Uh, review and authorize the purchase of one LC2500 subsurface leak correlator and one Z-Core DCL subsurface digital correlating logger with pinpoint products in the amount of 29946 Staff. What page is that on? 106. 146. 146. Yeah, However you choose to do this, yeah. Kevin and uh, Jim. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to hand it over to Jim. He did all the research on this and uh, had demonstrations from a couple of different vendors, and, uh, and he'll give you his, his uh, lowdown on that if you want to come to the podium. When we first started looking at it from your direction, um, I think actually uh, Director Jacobson wanted to get a little more uh, in-depth on what we were looking at uh, for leak detection uh, so I started the process off with looking at what was available for leak detection. And it's a huge range of tools Never from imagined. simple little geophones that you stick stethoscopes <laughs> in your ears, which we have, and they work great. They're great for pinpointing, but they're not great for traveling miles and miles and miles of mainline. Um, then they have, I got all the way up to insertion devices where you literally open your water main up and throw this little sound down in there and track it and it sends these signals back to you. Um, a lot of work on the system if we wanted to do that system, on our distribution system if we wanted to use that system. And as I talked more with some of the um, vendors that provide the service, um, they use leak noise correlators. And that's what we've had um, in the past when we've hired utility services for our leak detection uh, services. They've used um, 
noise correlators. And in fact, it is this noise correlator that utility services uh, use. There are a couple other uh, leak noise correlators out there. I found um, a, there's not a bunch, there's a few, three or four. And we settled on two that seemed really reasonable and that, that um, some of these service vendors really recommended. The LC2500 came highly recommended, and then the SEBA was one that um, Metrotex, Vivax Metrotech, um, we use their line locators, underground utility locators. Uh, they had a piece of equipment that they brought up and demonstrated as well. So we looked at both of those. Uh, we looked at durability. We looked at reliability. We looked at how they worked. Uh, we actually created a leak in our distribution system and said, okay, tell us where it's at. And they both came out and said, there it is right there. Um, so it came down to looking at, because I didn't, we didn't look at prices at all. We were just looking at the equipment. And I had four, uh, four staff personnel that looked at this that would be our primary uh, leak uh, detecting personnel uh, looking at this. And so I wanted their input back from that. And they looked at the LC2500 and they said, man, we could probably drop it out of the back of the truck. And they said, no, don't do that. <laughs> and it's rugged. Um, the other one looked real good. It performed real well, but they were concerned. It's a touch screen. Um, they were concerned when they're out there doing that. It's going to be wet. They're going to have to put screen protectors. It was a little bit cumbersome. Well, the unit itself was cumbersome. Uh, the, um, the transmitters were a little nicer uh, for size. Um, but when, we look, when they looked at the 2500, it was considerably durable, more durable, and easier to use. Um, through that process, we were thinking, um, okay, so we get a correlator and we're good to go. And when both of these companies uh, demonstrated their products, they mentioned a logger. And well, what does a logger do? Well, a logger is really valuable, and we see it being really valuable because we have some high traffic areas. For one, that if you have a lot of traffic going through there, it's really difficult for even a correlator to discern the noise difference. So that frequency mark that you see on the screen could be affected by that traffic. So you have to stop, wait for traffic to die down, and then pick up again. So the data loggers actually, um, you deploy those at night and you leave them out for 24, 48 hours, you set them and then you go back and you retrieve them. The value to that is that we can get in high traffic areas, we can get out in streets where a lot of our mains are in high traffic areas in the middle of streets where we could do it at night if we wanted to do night work, but what Mark mentioned earlier doesn't really work in what we want to do with our ongoing pipeline replacement and everything. So the daytime hours are best. For one, we're not burning overtime. Um, and we're not having part of a crew out at night and having a short crew in the day. So the data logger seems really, really valuable to us. And even in our areas where we have cross-country mains, uh, it's hard to get those, it's hard to get that um, correlator out there in the bushes and the trees and everything. When you can put these data loggers in, they work slightly differently, um, slightly different than the correlator. Uh, so we can deploy those on our hard to reach mains uh, as well. The nice thing about that too, when we looked at that, I was very interested for one, I think that we would be remiss if we didn't start looking at our plastic pipe. Um, because I suspect, I've seen some issues uh, with plastic pipe that have led me to believe that we could potentially have some leaks at some joints. Um, not the pipe itself, but at joints uh, primarily. It's hard to tell. And so with a leak noise correlator to, to work on plastic and large diameter mains, you need special sensors for that. So at first I thought, great, let's get the special sensors uh, because we're still really, budget-wise, we're looking really good with those sensors. But then when they talked about the data loggers, the data loggers are nice because the sensors that they use for that cover all ranges of material, pipe material, plastic, um, AC, uh, steel, and 
large diameter pipe. Their, uh, their frequency range is greater, so you can get lower on the bigger pipe. Um, so that's why we wanted not just the correlator, but we'd like to include uh, the data loggers uh, for those so that we can deploy those and use those in conjunction. So we can deploy data loggers one, you know, one 24-hour period, pick them up the next day, put that back into the uh, correlator, and, okay, let's go pinpoint that leak. So the great benefits to having that. Do they have on them lights or anything that would be an incentive for a thief? You know, when we first put out the, the uh, any rate, the, on our automatic meters and stuff, some of us, we had a problem initially with st people stealing them until we got to understand there was no aftermarket for the thing that they stole. So, but are these things, how valuable are they? Can, can a thief get away with them, or is there any lights that would attract somebody to them? No, and actually the sensors that would be deployed um, are actually, uh, they're, they're a relatively small unit, and they actually fit um, in a valve can. Um, so you would open a valve can in the middle of the street. Oh. Some of our valves are pretty deep, so we'd actually have to lower oh. them down with the lanyard. For somebody to go, oh, yeah, there's, you know, this $3,000 piece of equipment. I want to go get it. I, they, they wouldn't know, I mean, necessarily where to look or anything. So they're... Nobody gives them credit, Jim, for being brains. <laughs> so, well, if, although I have seen some really weird things in valve cans um, in the middle of Skyway, uh, I don't think that that would be an issue with the data loggers deploying them just because of the way that they're deployed. They're on valves in valve cans. A couple of questions here. Um, which one of these gives you the most precise pinpoint location? <coughs> They both performed about the same. What's about? So they, because if you're digging up asphalt or concrete, how close you get? Yeah. So so they're within feet of each other. I mean, one or two feet of each other. It's almost the most accurate. Yeah. And then and keep in mind that the correlator tells you here's this span because you're measuring. You deploy your transmitter out here, and you deploy your transmitter out here and you're standing in the center for the, just a basic explanation, and it says you're 30 feet from this one and 57 feet from this one. Right. You go over there, and then you take a piece of equipment that we already have. Um, it's called an LD-12, which is actually made by the same company as the um, uh, LC-2500, and that pinpoints it. So that's actually an electronic headset that you put on, and you just work in that. So you get it. Both of those, both, both of those products got it down to feet. So we created a leak via hydrant. Okay, so we just opened a hydrant and let it kind of spill, and they both came right to that area. If, if you can locate it with the one you already have, what's the benefit of buying this additional one? So the benefit is that if you try to use the LD12 that we have, you're going to put the sounder down on the ground, and you're going to listen nothing and you're going to go six inches away go I've seen them it's an extremely six slow away, process so it yeah. pick up this whole area. okay you know what I mean so okay. with with a correlator you can pick up hundreds hundred depending if it's straight if it's skyway several hundred feet at a time in minutes whereas with the LD12 I mean six inches at a time okay. Well, which one of these has the best warranty? What are the warranties on these? The things? warranties, I'd have to look at that um, to tell you exactly. They were similar five year. The transmitters, both transmitters had a one year, had a one year replacement on the transmitters and five years on the, and both had five years on the, um, uh, receiver itself. Okay. And Pinpoint's been around for a while, right, Jim? They have been around for a while. Um, what, what I learned, and it was odd to me, because we use, we use MetroTech, uh, excuse me, we use MetroTech line locators, and they're wonderful, wonderful pieces of equipment. 
Um, I was under the impression when we first looked at this um, C3 that it was actually a Metrotech, but you know when corporations buy each other and everything, it's a little messed up. So this um, this SEBA is actually it, it appears to be German made. When I go onto their website, um, it's difficult um, it's, it's difficult to navigate to even get into English language um, to look at that. So Metrotech is the dealer for. Uh, that it's difficult. The parts seem to be relatively difficult to get if we want to. Um, also, if we're looking at the data logger, um, the transmitters themselves for the LC2500 were uh, less expensive, and we can buy them in smaller units. When you look at the SEBA, you got we got a price break if you bought 50 or more. We're looking at three to possibly eight. <clears throat> that we would want to deploy. We're, we're not going to try to deploy our whole system. And Oh, the other thing, too, is the mapping system, too. The, um, it seemed like the, the SEBA uh, mapping system, you actually had to download it. You had to have a GIS mapping system, so we'd have to download our, um, or however you do it, and Mickey would be able to tell you better, um, we'd have to put our distribution system mapping on their, um, on their uh, receiver, uh, so that we could use their data loggers and the um, LC2500, the subsurface stuff, you do not have to do that. Um, you just put in your coordinates and, and tell it what to do, and it'll tell you within feet of where you're at. Do you, I know in all of your trenches you've got a tracing wire. Um, most. If, most, yeah. In most. If you were going to use this wide spectrum detector in a trench that didn't have any tracing and it was PVC, for example, would it work accurately there? Uh, yes, it does actually. Um, we part of the process is to locate the utility underground and try to get a nice line on where you're at, especially if it takes some goofy bend or something in there, right? Um, but what and and um, utility services was really good about this. And by the way, we get training with both of these. Um, they'll come up and train us for a full day or two, I believe, um, on both the logger and the and the correlator. Uh, but line of sight is really good. So if you're looking, because you use hydrants or different appurtenances, maybe an air vac or something like that. So you're able to say, well, I'm standing at this hydrant and I can see that hydrant right there. I'm going to deploy a transmitter here and I'm going to deploy a transmitter there. Even if this thing took a little turn in the main, you're still okay. So they were, they were pretty good about that. Cause, okay. yeah. It's nice to locate it because you want to know. Yeah. Uh, so that goes hand in hand, but we have locators, and so. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Um, what happens if a 1,200-pound heifer stands on one? You're talking about running it cross country, and so forth. Well, then we have more troubles because they're going to be in a bow can, and um, the heifer is probably going to have the broken leg. Um, oh, seriously. Okay. <laughs> they, uh, that's not going to happen. Literally, when I say we put them in a valve can, our valves, the top of our valves where that transmitter would sit, I mean, there's a few, there's some shallow valves in the system. I'm not saying that, but most of them are 18, 24, 30 inches and more in the ground. Mm -hmm. So, and on a, with a steel lid over them. So the idea of that, something like that happening is... Well, on the... This one piece of property I lease that's in the district for grazing. It's uh, on Row Road, and I can't think of the crossroad. But at any rate, they had a, we had a leak out there, and I reported it, and I came in and put a big clamp over it. And it was a T when it was going off, and this other main went across the field. only reason I knew the main was there, there was two signs on it, one on ne a neighbor's property and one on this property. But there was... There was only one can, if you can call it that. It had a stick in it. I don't know. It didn't have any metal top on it. And I'm going, okay, if you're talking about putting these things out as a practical thing, I'm, this isn't a joke, is, is there any chance that maybe you're going to have to put a little wire around them or something if you're going to leave them overnight? Because on, in that instance, if you put it in... Yeah, I mean, we'd have to look at that in, in a case-by-case. Case. If it requires some sort of protection, we're going to take those steps. We're not yeah, going to just... Dig a little hole and put a plate yeah, on it. Yeah, we're not going to leave it out there. Yeah. But we're going to use existing valve cans to do that. So, 
Well, there's lots of 4-H projects and stuff, too. <laughs> Jim, how do you see this rolled out if we get these devices? I mean, how, how, do, you, how do you see it rolled out? In other words, how are you going to... Are, are we looking at certain lines that were just, you know, you were suspect lines, and then we go from there? Or? We do. The last, um, so the last few years, we've actually kept log on our job ticket database of pipe condition. So when we go down and repair a leak, we have a, a good, fair, and bad rating. And so we would look at those bads and say, let's start looking in those areas We've primarily, when we've um, used leak detection services, we've looked at 60, <clears throat> roughly 60 miles of steel pipe. We haven't looked at our AC, we haven't looked at our plastic, and we haven't really looked at large diameter pipe. Um, large diameter pipe is difficult. It's, <laughs> it's difficult, and we need to look at that. We need to look at that, we need to look at our plastic. Um, so I see really looking and taking some of those areas that we know are bad and sounding those areas and so, you know, if we, if we know that we have a bad area here and we find another leak 30 feet away and it's bad as well, then we're probably going to say, you know what, we need to get out in the road or get off here and replace this section because we literally have sections of main that are clamp after clamp after clamp after clamp after clamp. So we would look at those areas too and that again is kind of ties in what we'd be talking about here in a few months is what we'd look at for pipe replacement too. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of things to consider when we do that but I see it, I see it working like that and covering an array of, uh, of areas maybe and I, I, I want to include Neil on it because he's going to have really good input because he knows the hydraulics of the system well, and he's going to he's going to have some input on there too, uh, on on what would look good from a hydraulic standpoint. Great. Thank I you. Got one more quick question: percentage-wise of a leak to the total flow of the pipe, what's the accuracy of that detecting a leak? So if it's a if it's a you know three thousand gallon per minute flow. <laughs> And you've got a 50 gallon per minute leak. Will it detect that? What's where? Where are we at on yeah, that? Yeah. So we we well not we utility services has detected um, positively detected leaks of less than a half a gallon a minute on eight, ten, twelve inch pipe. Wow, that's, that's, that's pretty that's accurate. Very good. Wow. wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's great. That's good. That's and good. occasionally <coughs> a zero leak. But that's pretty rare to get a dry hole. It was pretty rare. I, every once in a while, low, low percentage. Yeah, and I think they, I think their average uh, rate on detection was way in the 90s as far as accuracy. And a lot of them are half um, to five. Yeah. Um, it's not, it's, it's not common to find something more than than five. They're they're usually smaller than that. And we or still we still have a considerable amount of leakage, don't we? According to the charts from mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, non non metered water loss in yep. acre feet. That's correct. I think that we captured quite a bit with the AMR, um, and especially uh, when we did AMR, we put uh, new meters in. So I think we captured a lot there. Um, I think I mean our system's old. <clears throat> I, yes. I don't want to ask Jim a question. I want to make a comment on, because I'm the oldest board member, and on the, how we went through this. When I first got on the board, we would talk about leak detection, and we'd find that it was done where uh, we'd ha our engineer would have some idea that there had been leakage in a certain area, and he'd use the, the time that the pipe was in the ground and this, and very often they were digging pipe, and it wasn't, the pipe was all right. And then... At lunch, at like the meeting we had this last week, in those days it was held at the old yard, and Larry Dunk and I were sitting there and talking to our engineer, and I said, is there any other way of doing this? Because the head of the field staff at that time said, no, there's nothing we can do. And so Neil says, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, what's their name, you know, the water company up in Megalia? They've been using a sound system to find their leaks. It's very accurate. 
So the next year, we managed to find enough money to hire this leak service company who came out and found all sorts of leaks in places where we didn't think there was any leaks <laughs> and others. And so it's worked real well. And for about what we're going to pay for this, or a year and a half of their service, we will have our own instrument, yeah. and we'll be able to it, catch, hopefully catch leaks. Because one year we decided not to invest that money and went on to another. The other thing about this is the pipes that we're talking about are World War II surplus steel pipes wrapped in asphalt. And like when they repaired the one pipe, came, the crew came out on this least round. They were pulling asphalt off of the old pipe and pieces of pipe, but they put a big enough patch, on patch it. over it. You know, you've seen them in the storage yard, and that it stopped it, and it hasn't leaked since. But the, the biggest headache we have is this old pipe, and since we're limited resources, we can't just make a gigantic program to go replace pipe. If this system, along with the, the experts that our men will become in using it, which should save the district easily the kind of investment we're putting here. And this is why when we started this, I said, this is a one project that's come across our desk that it's real easy mm -hmm. to figure the ROI, return on investment, because it's going to pay off pretty quickly. And so I'm in favor of this. And I'll leave somebody else who's got better idea what works. It sounds like they all work, and what you want to do with it. And Kevin, how much money did we pay the last time to test, it, test it? Twenty-two. Was it twenty-two? Mm -hmm. Right in that neighborhood. Yeah. Twenty-two thousand. Yes. Yeah. Well, Bill never wants to buy anything, so if he wants to buy it, I guess <laughs> let's yeah, go ahead and do it quick. <laughs> Get it while we can. <laughs> all those in favor, aye. Yeah. 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 Out in the yard next time, you'll see a cement line pipe that was fairly large and where it blew out, and it caught everybody unsuspected and was behind Safeway. It cost us two million gallons of water in 24 hours or some fantastic figure before we got it fixed. And you're saying the new tester will test that pipe, right? Well, yeah. I'm saying that we can find leaks. That was a little different animal that you're talking about there. But a big break like that. <laughs> that was a burst. That wasn't was a just blow a up. leak. <laughs> so so we I just for you, and any time we have a blowout, we can blame you for not finding. But of course, <laughs> yeah. right? <laughs> I, I appreciate what you're saying, uh, uh, Bill, and 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 I agree. I think that uh, the return on investment is there, but I think there are many more peripheral benefits that I haven't even thought of at this point with the research that I've done. I think there are things that will come to light. Um, one of the things that I think of is when we um, determined that we were going to have leak detection services come here, I was talking to Neil, well, how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to have them look at all of our steel pipe because what were we doing? We were replacing our steel pipe. That's all we were replacing. So we were doing leak detection, but we were only looking at steel pipe. Well, okay, that's 60 miles out of 170. Mm -hmm. So we want to look at all of, All it. of it eventually. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. You bet. Any further questions for Jim? For me. Good presentation. Comments from the public? None? Thank well, you. Uh, I'm yeah, <laughs> but with trouble is, it if it's trouble, yeah, meter. trouble is, is that's just going to the ground. Right. We, we don't get yeah. money for it. If, it. if it ran through a meter, we'd be okay with the leak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, actually, I've got a small comment, and I'm surprised you didn't mention it because you and I both talked about this before. Oh. If we obtain this equipment in the future, and it's uh, we become knowledgeable on it. We need to potentially pursue the possibility of privatize. You know, if people call from the community and ask, "Well, who do I get?" We need to consider having a rate that we charge that, if we can and we have the time, then we do that. Man, but that's a, that's another whole topic for another night. We have to get it first. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm already in favor of this because this gets us on the other side of the meter and makes money for the district. Yes, I love it. I, I've received yeah. postcards from once in a year about some service that does exactly what you're right. talking about. They talk about checking their private lines on the other side of the meter, and here's their fee schedule. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's already there. Get there, Emily. 
<laughs> cross that bridge to know. In, in the future, we cross that one. Yes. All right. If there are no further questions, motion would be in order. I move approval to authorize the interim district manager to direct appropriate staff to cause the purchase of one LC 2500 subsurface leak correlator and one Z core DCL three subsurface digital correlating logger from 10 point products of Ronart Park, California in the amount of $29,946.75. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded. Any further questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Jim. Jim. Thanks, Jim. Good night, Jim. Merry Christmas. All right. Great holiday. Okay, back to six, Treasurer's Memo. Yeah, my written report uh, was actually in a conference down in San Francisco uh, earlier <laughs> this month, um, which I'll kind of give you a little background on that as government finance or government tax uh, conference. But the, the one thing was is I actually met with our uh, people who were doing our bond that refinance, mm -hmm. and with the new uh, proposed tax legislation, we got in right at the right time because that actually has a negative effect on corporate uh, corporate interest rates when it comes to uh, tax free debt because they're lowering the corporate tax. Uh, so now you're, they're going to look for a bigger spread when they're looking for tax free debt. So we, if however long this lower taxes on corporate debt, probably now interest rates are going to rise on private placements, and we probably won't see the 2.25s that we got. So we we got in right at the right time. So yeah, so that, that that was the biggest news out of the thing. Every, everything else is kind of everybody's still doesn't know what to. You nailed that one just right, Jim. That's right. Yeah. That was a good. That was a good one. So. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, so um, cash, cash is actually, uh, we're seeing an increase in cash. Um, our restricted reserves are actually going to start going away um, based on that we're going to use some of those to pay down that debt. So it uh, doesn't mean that, that our cash is going to go up. It's just our st restricted reserves will go down. Um, debt service, we're, we're almost all the way through <laughs> our debt service payments for the whole year. Um, from an operational standpoint, we're right in line. Our consumption revenue is actually over budget. Um, as you can see here, we're actually $148,000 over budget. So there, Cliff, you can kind of see that, that we, we, we budget based on that big drop. So you can see that you know, we budgeted $400,000 in, in September, and then it drops way down, three hundred and two hundred in November. And even in December, we, we estimate 166 into January of 135. So we, we take those into consideration that we're, we're going to see a big drop off in, uh, in consumption. Um, but being that we're popping back up in December, I, I have a feeling that number is going to can maybe beat December's even December's budget. So mm -hmm. um, as long so as we have no continued no rain, you know, it's going weather. to make a difference. Right. Yeah. But we, we basically estimate on those that we're, we're not going to see much outdoor outdoor watering. Um, I already talked about the Aqua Hawk and how that's going, um, how our refinance we're going to close uh, this month or this this week. Um, <clears throat> The, the B res we're working with the B res on getting that SRF funding, and then we're also working with SRF on the funding for the recycle project. Our annual audit is scheduled for the 15th, which will start on the 16th because the 15th is a holiday. Um, and then, like I said, we're working with the uh, retirement plan auditor, we're working with uh, getting the changing of the retirement plan um, to work through. That's been quite a bit of, of work on our side. That's about the highlights. Any questions? Any questions? I have a question, but I um, had a request. Um, on page 58, how you do the, when you're doing your um, projected work, uh, versus actual and you have nice a total at the yeah. right-hand side? Yeah. Could, could you maybe include that, too, in, um, on the Draft ones? Form? Yeah, on the ones, uh, page 61 and page 62? <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I see what you're just saying. The total, so you can see um, how how the check register is going, and also how the salary hmm. sure. yeah. is going. Okay. Yep. That's all. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, what is SRF? It's back to State. State. district has secured funding for from SRF for B State revolving fund. Okay. 
our our bank. <laughs> Any further questions? Anything from the public? Back to the board. Um, motion would be in order. I move we accept the treasurer's memo. I'll second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Number seven, approval of checks. I have no questions. I have one comment. Um, I wish Jim were here. I wanted to make sure we're getting good quality chlorine because I was checking the price, and it's a pretty darn good price he's getting on that. That's the bulk load, I'm assuming. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's like 80 or 80 or 85 cents a gallon somewhere yeah. in there. Yeah. That's, that's pretty good. He's doing he's doing his homework on on yep. chemical purchases. Yep. Looks good. Good. I know because I buy that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I just had a quick question on our uniform services. Do we do we go out to bid for that every few years? We're in a five year contract. Oh, five year. Yeah, we we just recently looked at that contract to okay. see when, when that's up, uh -huh. and so when it's up, we're going to really take a strong look yeah. at our uniforms. Because I know, not to mention names, there's a particular company in Chico that's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty competitive. competitive. Yeah, yeah, we're we're going to look we're going to look at the uniform services globally. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. To see if if we're getting the best bang for a buck, and if the employees would rather have a different something else. You know, some alternative. So we're, we're going to look into that as soon as we're out of that contract. Okay. Thanks. I, I have a question on page 65. It's uh, Bruce Davi. Uh, I notice all his treatment work, at least it looks here, is Clark Lake, TP, treatment plant, shop, shop, treatment plant, treatment plant. How about our main that goes down from... Well, I'll go to B res first. B res, we went, I went out to look for some material for the garden with uh, Keith, and he explained to me a bunch of things around it, and, which was interesting. But one thing I noticed is that we have quite a fire. I didn't say anything to Keith about this. We have a fire hazard there of, uh, <clears throat> on one side of the B res. As you go out the gate, you'll see it on the, or go in the gate, you'll see it on the left hand side. And it's brush and tall grass and mm -hmm. scotch brome all together. Uh, it needs work. I, I know we want to replace b res but we want, don't want it to burn up before we get around <laughs> to it. So we need to do some work in there. Yeah, I'll ask Keith about that. Cleaning it up. And then I've been told that the pipeline that goes on the back side of Miguelia that comes down to our pumping plant for up above, that it has problems with weeds. One fellow told me it's, I haven't walked it. Uh, in fact, one of the things I hope to do this winter is get a hold of Bill Baker or, or Bill. Taylor. Taylor, yeah. And uh, walk that. But it, what I was told is there's all sorts of uh, scotch brome underneath it also. And I I don't know for sure I haven't walked it or seen it. But uh, that should be checked out too. Just the same reason we don't want a brush fire coming up there, <coughs> burning up the main only pipeline that goes into town. Yeah. Okay. It may be a steel pipeline, but it would <laughs> still get damaged with a fire. Yeah. Scotch broom is highly volatile too. So. Yeah. So, uh, and, and since Bruce does our spraying work, it might be something to have him look at. Sure. Well, Kim, we got an invoice here for uh, from Nice. Well, several invoices from Knife River. The one on Country Club. Do we do we <clears throat> charge that to the Town Hydrant Fund? The uh, four thousand. Uh, there's one there for four thousand. It's Country Club. So what we project. do is, um, unless it's specific to a hydrant, what we've done is we've we've accumulated all of our costs uh -huh. and then we're taking the cost and splitting it right in half. And then, okay. so the hydrant fund will be charged half and we're oh, yeah. taking half. Oh, I see. So that, so okay. yeah. Right. And so, uh, and, but if it's specific to a hydrant, <clears throat> right. that is a hundred percent hydrant fund. And sure. so we, we account for that a hundred percent off of a different job ticket. Okay, cool. Yep. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions? Still looking. Any questions from the public? None? Motion is in order. Uh, 
I make a motion and we accept the check register. Is that true? Yes. And you're supposed to technically read. read. Number seven. Read number seven. <laughs> read. The agenda. I, I got right it. here. <laughs> either that, you can, just, I'm on the wrong you can either read the agenda oh. or go through the page. Okay, I make a motion to approve. <laughs> Uh, check numbers 51242 through 51351 for the month of November 2017, totally $405,434.47, exclusive of voided checks number 51247, 51267, and 51296. An authorization of a similar amount allowing or adjusting, adjusting for extraordinary budget or board approved items during the month of December. I'll second that. Thank you. <laughs> I, I want to have a okay. couple of questions. <laughs> yeah. uh, there's on page 71, there's under um, U.S. Bank Corporate Payment System, it has employee incentive program 133.28. What was that for? The first one under U.S. Bank. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know exactly what it was for. I would assume it was for lunch, bringing in lunch on a meeting, but I will have to get back to you on that one exactly. Okay, the other question. I don't see anything listed for your trip that you went on. Is that under another account? Uh, it, no, it would be on next month's agenda. Yeah. Next month's? Yeah. Okay. I, I actually missed one. I'm glad you mentioned that. I turned the page back. What on page 71 is miscellaneous professional services for Town of Paradise? <clears throat> for $7,141. Oh, that should get that for attention somehow. I, I saw that too. Massages for when the employees have sore muscles? <laughs> no, no, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. I'm drawing a blank on that. I know I remember what seeing that. I'm going to have to get back to him. Hmm. Where is it at? I don't see a seven. Right here on page seven. In the middle of the page. Miscellaneous yeah. professional services, town of paradise. Middle, pa middle of the page, probably. Oh, town of paradise. Wow. Yeah, I didn't really see that thing. <laughs> Miscellaneous professional services. Aha. Uh -huh. We well, expect a good answer, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, I, it, it was, it was some, I, it was some project, and I can't not I cannot remember it right now. But I'll find out actually during the break, because I, I know where it is. Well, it's time for a good break. As soon as we've yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so do we do okay. we approve that check register prior to finding out what this is, or that's already been paid. It's already, yeah, it's too late. Yeah. Too late. You can't, yeah. can't tr draw it back. I would, I'm curious. I would like Stop to look at it. We can still find that out. Yeah. If you, if you want to break now before you make a motion, I can go tell you. And go motion and second has already happened. Yeah, we just need we to haven't vote. voted on it yet. <laughs> no. You can break. Just you, yeah, you, can can you, have a, you can have a break before you vote. Right? We haven't voted on it yet. No, we haven't. We can take a break. If you all want to take a five-minute break, fine. We'll take a five-minute break. Okay, five-minute break. For those that need to go to the restroom. Uh, do you remember that we were paying for a portion of their new... Fire yes. specialist. Yeah. Oh, they yeah. finally invoiced it for okay. us for June fifth to Not September thirtieth, and uh, so the the portion was seven thousand one hundred. I didn't say anything about that. Fire no. specialist. <laughs> yeah. It's like what? What was that? It's a fire prevention inspector. We're in the wrong business. Yeah, we eh? paid twenty thousand dollars for that salary for that person as part of our hybrid agreement. fund agreement. We, it's out of the hydrant fact. <laughs> yes, you're right. It's so, truly their fund. <laughs> it is. So we, we just, oh, okay, keep I, got, I got you. So we were the keeper of the money and we gave, okay, mm -hmm. got it. We dispersed it to right. them when they asked for it. All right. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Approval of checks has been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Last one, the employee incentive <coughs> was for lunch on that day we had all those closed session items that Dustin was here. Uh -huh. that oh, yeah. We brought oh, in yeah. lunch. Oh, that's yeah. what and a good lunch it was. And that's, that was what that employee incentive okay. amount was. Okay. Legal report, number eight. I have a very brief and very cryptic report. We're always disappointed to hear that. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> um, Did you have some uh, new information on the Sabla 
biofilm <coughs> project, but the non-disclosure agreement prevents me from discussing that any further, and mm -hmm. the timing of the information prevented us from getting a closed session agenda item. Okay. Okay. So um, you can anticipate a closed session agenda discussion soon. And we'd also like to recommend you consider at the next meeting appointing an ad hoc committee, um, you know, two representatives to kind of respond to these things since mm -hmm. the information doesn't really come in a timely manner for making these meetings. So that will come to you next time, and that's about all I'm going to say on that. Make sure you get that on there. Georgiana, Kevin? I, I think an ad hoc committee can be formed at the will of the president with our bylaws Correct. at any time. You can appoint it to right now if you would yeah, like. So if your bylaws permit it, then. Yes, the yeah, bylaws they permit. do. But the president of the board picks the committee. Well, okay. Good. Okay, we'll don't, do. We don't have to vote on it, Dan. Whatever you decide. Oh, it's okay. Do uh, you want to do that right now then? It's up to you. Sure. Okay. Uh, anybody particularly like to be on that? I would. Would I would too. be very interested as well. We have two people that would like to do that, so you are on it, so you know <laughs> whom to contact now. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> Sometimes the word does work <laughs> Very seldom, however. <laughs> Is that it? Thank you, Dan. Emily, done? That's all I've got. That's it. Okay, thank you very much. Number nine, unfinished business. A, previously approved rate increase effective January 1. Uh, we already have done this, uh, but Kevin, you want to yeah. briefly? So this is, uh, and it, it was vetted by Emily, uh, the formal resolution uh, that specifies exactly what you guys uh, decided on last board meeting. Uh, just to pop through it to highlight um, that there is a new rate sheet attached that was, that, um, that will be in effect 1-1-2018. That's what you're approving through this. But you're also approving <coughs> that the rate will go up in 2019, as was voted on previously, unless, what I expect, we would come back in November Correct. and re-look at it to see if Is that's again? necessary or not. So uh, we wanted to make sure that that was in there just so that we did not lose the sight that it's already been approved and that it's moving forward. Um, is there anything else you wanted to highlight in that? No, that was the big piece for me. And yeah. Got it. So that, that's it. And is that the right number? Yes. It okay, is. great. Does anybody have any questions on that? <clears throat> well, just clarification. So if we already had a rate hike that was approved and we lowered that rate, for one year, um, without reading through this whole thing again, <coughs> does it have to include that we still maintain the right for the one in 2019? Because we already that's already that's going to happen automatically. Right. That's, that's what they what just said. Says. Yeah. It says this will happen in 2019 yeah. unless the board takes action. Okay. Right. We want it to that's be explicit said, yeah. and not right. implicit. Yeah. That's and that's good. That's, that's what it should be. Yeah. Okay. Are there further questions from the board? Open it to the public. Ward, any comments? Okay, bring it back. Uh, motion, please. Well, what is it going to say? This is a uh, this is a resolution that uh, goes by. It will be. Roll call. It, it will be roll call. Yes. Okay. We still have a motion. But we need a motion on it first before we can vote on it. I make a motion that we approve previously approved rate increase effective January 1st, 2018, adopt resolution number 2017-17 to modify and delay the rate adjustment approved in April 2016, <coughs> reducing fees and charges effective January 1st, 2018, as set forth in Exhibit B. Need a second, please. I'll second that. Thank you. Roll call vote. Please, Georgiana. Director Solis? Aye. Director Rice? No. Director Jacobson? Yes. Director Kellogg? I'd like to ask Ann why she voted no. That's because she voted no before. Oh, she voted no <coughs> before on the same proposition. Yes. And I voted no, didn't I? Yes. Yes. Okay, no again. <laughs> President Whitley? Aye. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Did I speak for you correctly? Sorry, I should let you answer. No, thank you. 
Okay, 9B, um, PID Policy and Procedures Manual. Uh, Bill, this was something that you put forward before, so if you would like to pursue this. Can I, can I ask a question on this? I know yeah. we, and we talked about this earlier, Dan. I don't have a problem either way, but mm -hmm. I'm wondering if we should address the, uh, the rate change that I had on the agenda and get it out of the way before we spend all the time addressing the policies and procedures, which we can get bogged down in. Okay. I, I don't really have a problem if others wish to. The, the majority of this doesn't affect that, but only one item, I think. But it, it's not a problem for me. We've been if you want to just, this thing and putting it yeah. off. And well, when we get to it, you'll find it, even though it reports to a lot of things, it's not that detailed. Really? Really. Well, if we can blow through it, then let's just continue That's on. Should, should be able to. All right. And the majority of it doesn't That's affect fine. yours. Follow the agenda then. Okay, it's going to require several motions as we go. You can't just put it all together and make one motion. It's because there's going to be debate on a couple of these things, I'm sure. Do you want to take it then one by one, one two, one three, piece four, at a time? Do you want to take number first. one and then number two and then that way, Bill? Is that what you're? Yeah, it says reference on page be? 88. It gives a list, and we just start at the top, and go through them okay. as we go. Okay. And, and keep in mind, some of them are very simple. Like the first one is basically at the where is it? Miguelia Reservoir on page 90. And it simply changes prohibited to allowed. The, <coughs> the reason, part of the reason for this is that at the next Lake Committee, we're going to have a, a fellow from the NR, Butte County Resource Conservation District. He's going to talk to us about trails, and they've got money for trails and stuff that they're working with the uh, Forest Service and State of California and the county on. So he's experienced within the regulations and what have you. And that would be end up being uh, uh, recreation or going around the Megalia Reservoir, where here it says it's prohibited. They just simply change it to allowed. Do we want to allow the public access to Megalia Dam? Could I make a quick comment here? Maybe we just say controlled. Or allowed with restrictions. Well, why don't or we just say like controlled that? and not prohibited? Because that way we can call the shots on stuff going forward. What is the difference between controlled and prohibited? Uh, prohibited means not at all zero. Yeah. Nobody has. Nobody can go there except in an official capacity. Controlled means that we can control when and who. Who's we? This board. The board. The board. <laughs> so would there be we were a ask you to go out there, by anyway. which one would request access? Well, if if we change this to control, then then down the road we decide that we're going to create a recreation whatever event, then so we have the control to say public is allowed. And the signage is there would follow. Is the there a reason not to just change it at that time? I've got concerns about liability um, in a couple of different respects. When you take a private area such as the reservoir, then you make mm -hmm. access to the public. Yeah. Trails are great. But um, people get injured on trails, people go off trails. Precisely why I don't want to just say aloud. Well, I, I think yeah. Mark's been wanting to say something. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's right. I, I'm still on the same page with you, Cliff. But what about uh, some verbiage that said limited access may be allowed, something like that? Allowed with restrictions? Or? Yeah, something like that with restrictions. Because if, if we open it, there's going to be appropriate signage sooner or later that says it's well, there is like a, every there's old signs that are falling down around it that says, uh, you know, public water works, don't trespass. And of course, I've walked down on one side quite a few times. On the other side, I haven't where the roadway is. I've just driven on this. But the thing is, I thought allowed would cover it because allowed means that it has to have somebody's approval. So that would be back to the board. District manager's approval? Uh, how, about, how about if we hold tight on this, and then once we get somebody and you guys approve some type of trail system, mm -hmm. then you then put that trail system in the policy that says you will allow Specific. public on trail Lay system. On trail. Yeah. And then that kind of what? defines what kind of allowability that you yeah, guys would The only want. problem I have with this is I see that we're going to again... A little later on, we're going to make changes to something that I made changes to 
We'll be altering uh, again. Huh? Uh, and we're doing it now. We're now we're going back again and again and again. And I know it's always evolving, but sometimes I think we stick ourselves in a corner and then we have to back our way out. And I'm wondering if we can be more liberal and say it's controlled by the district manager somehow to give you the authority to decide if and when the public can be allowed there without having to bring it back to the board every time and us having to change our policies and procedures manual. Well, you, you, I don't think you have to bring it back to the board, but you're going to bring the project, whatever it happens to be, it is whether it's trails or something else, has to get the approval of the board. This just gives you the bylaws to work with. In other words, the board doesn't have to do anything except refer to these bylaws and it says it's allowed. So the board can decide whether the thing, we have liability problems or whatever, would, would work through it. And then the committee can work on that because this is just a work in project. When I wrote this, I didn't know if we are going to do anything with the trails or not. I still don't know if it's going to be anything we do. It's just that it came up and I thought, okay, and the trails thing has advantages and disadvantages, but I didn't want to get into trails. I just wanted to have the door open a little bit so that something could be proposed right here, prohibited. Well, forget I, it. I understand what you're saying, but, Bill, look at it this way. This is available online for the general <coughs> public. And if I read that and it says, hey, Miguel, your reservoir, hell, <coughs> I can go there. That's right. It's loud. And yeah, then you catch me over there or I fall into the water and crack my head open on a rock. Well, all of those problems you're talking about is what's going on around Paradise Lake, on Paradise um, District. True, but it's a lot less dicey. The liability problem is up there is much or more so right. because you have boats and stuff. So I don't. I think some of the things you're worried about, and it. I understand one thing about attorneys. If it's going to rain, you're going to tell us it's going to be a washing. Huge <laughs> rainstorm. And I'd like you to have 20 umbrellas. Yes, right. See, so uh, I understand where you're coming from, and that's just standard operations because you're trying to protect the district. And so all I'm trying to do is make things a little flexible so that if something does come down the line, but it'll go through the board, it'll go through the usual thing. But if you want to change the wording, fine. I don't have a problem with that. A couple suggestions? Yes. Assuming that the idea to just wait until you know what you're going to do isn't palatable, what if you did access around the reservoir shall be prohibited unless prior approval from you choose the board, the general manager, I don't care who, has been received? Well, the committees so, don't approve anything. They have to go through the board, <laughs> the board because if there's any money spent, any liability. I'm not talking about a project. I'm talking about access. Permission. So the general rule is there's no access. In this area, unless you get prior approval, except for, or you just wait till you figure out what kind of access you're willing to allow, and then you yeah. cross which might occur in a few months. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. the, the real reality of the access is that it's one of the directors here is very much aware. As a member of his family goes down there and fishes. Now the fishing thing's illegal, but on the side where the road is, that's where the people come down from the houses up above and they fish in Miguel oh. Reservoir, which is prohibited. And so it, it's simply not enforced. So it, we don't have... How about access around the reservoir shall be limited? And then... <laughs> and that's his job to say to what. So if the 4-H club comes and they have a planned tour around that and he looks at it and says, looks reasonably safe to me, I'll authorize that. So, But you can't just go there and walk onto it uh, without... I, I do like Emily's wording because it, it, it requires the person to reach out. So if I read the policy and it says access is limited, then it, to me that's like, well, it's limited. It means that I have the ability to push that envelope. If it says prohibited except for permission, it means that's pretty stated that I cannot go on there until I reach out to get permission to go on there. So <clears throat> I, I like her, her stance because I think it is a prohibitive statement that except for gives us freedom to do what we would like. It is limited with, per, with permission only. And I think you want to say who, because it, I just don't yeah. want to get in a, you know, I run so into they know who to talk in a to. safe way and I say, hey, can I go walk around the reservoir tomorrow? And Anne says, sure. 
is that permission or Jim mm-hmm. Ladrini or Kevin? I mean, who, right. who has the authority right. to say you can have access? What does it the, say? The PID management or? Manager, I think. We as a board and individuals have no authority uh, except in these board meetings. So if we tell somebody to go out to the lake and they yeah. fall down and get hurt, we're liable. And we don't have any protection. Well, so what was the verbiage that you chose that you I like I like prohibited except for uh, what would you say? Uh, I, I would just say access from the reservoir is prohibited unless prior uh, permission. Maybe we should granted. have done your thing yeah. first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or, or we could just leave it like it is. <laughs> Why don't we just leave it like it is unchanged until That's we have right. a reason to change it? <laughs> yeah, I think so too. That's what I would do too. <laughs> Why not just leave it there until we have a reason to change it, <laughs> yeah. and we can have this discussion then? Because it based sounds, on what we're going to do, sounds like in a few months we might actually then, know. Then, then, the then let's bring it up and discuss yeah. what we're going to do at the time. Yeah, make the yeah. Motion. Yeah. and it'll be more appropriate. Okay, Bill. Well, Next. I, That's I thought this one was going to be simple, so I don't know what's going to happen with the rest of them. I'm not for that. Okay. You concur with Next. that one, Bill? Is that okay? No, we're, we're done with that one. Yeah, right. Six point five. Four minutes. So, so uh, do we want to vote on okay. that? Okay. Was that okay no, with you? Don't you? Need to. Oh, you just, want to comment now on each item? We're just bypassing it, yeah? Yeah, you can just, say it's tabled to another day. That's one way you get Do you want to open that specific one up to public? Or, uh, so we which would you like? I just asked. You know, do you want to do it one at a time? Yeah. Well, if it's okay. going to be by permission, I think it should be in writing. And in writing, what they're signing has the rest of the rules. Right. And when it says access around, that means you've got to stay on the trail. You can't go down to the water. Right. And it should say on designated trailways. We don't want people just wandering around. Right. Yeah. If we have right. designated trails, you stay on the trail. Yeah. Okay. And the signage would say that at the time. Good point, yeah. Ward. Thank you. That's right. Okay. Next. Chapter 6.5. What do we got? Portionment of water. Portionment of water. In the event of water me. shortage condition, the district will endeavor to equally apportion the water to the land land or customers entitled. Therefore, in accordance with the water shortage continuously analysis discussion found in the most recent publication of the district's urban water management plan or in accordance with emergency measures adopted by the board. The decision of the board as to the need for and the method of portioning the water shall be conclusive. No water user shall permit the waste of water which is under his control. The district reserves the right to refuse delivery of water when it appears the satisfaction of the manager that the proposed use of the method will require such excessive quantities of water that will constitute waste. I don't, when was that, Georgiana, do you know when that was passed? Because that was passed mm-hmm. just a few years well, ago. Well, the whole Page 94. policy manual was reviewed yeah. in 2014. But that was not 6.6. 2014 it was revised. Okay. Oh. You're on the third gotcha, one. Gotcha, gotcha. This was put in because of, of the drought. And I think it's a, the, what we found out later is that how it was used was in some cases excessive and largely up to the discretion of the manager. I don't remember anything coming back to the board on it uh, other than the manager did what he felt was the thing to do. And I think it should be revised. Whether it gets revised tonight or you guys don't even want to touch it, that's up to you. I agree with you. I don't think the manager should have the right to determine (coughs) what's excessive use of water. I think the board does. But the um, the all the pro- prohibitions are spelled out in the in the plan, in the yeah. plan. on page forty two goes on in the urban. It's delineated. Yeah, but the urban part of what you were going to have the effect of get to us, Emily. That was going to be the the permanent commentary closes on the twenty sixth. Twenty sixth. Okay. So until we see what that says, we really. What's the commentary from whom? The, the state plan, uh, the state conservation the plan for the mandatory measures that the state. <clears throat> I think they released them last month, uh, and the comment period closes oh. at the end of this month. Well, it's it makes some of those emergency <clears throat> provisions. We'll we'll word something here, and then the state will turn right around and no, say I'm you can't do that. Worried about that? I, we got all sorts of holes. That we, um, where is it in here? I just read it. I have to go back and find. It. Adoption where it's adopted by the board, the decision of the board need for the method of apportionment water shall be conclusive. No water's, water is under control. The district reserves the right to delivery uh, to the satisfaction of the manager. And I'd like to strike that. 
just the satisfaction of the manager because that's where we had some deals where some customers weren't treated fairly, others did at did any rate. I, I don't think that should be left there. I just leave it up to the board and so there'd be the last line, district reserves the right, refuse delivery of water when it appears to the satisfaction of the manager that the pro proposed use of method of use will require such excessive quantities of water that will constitute waste. And I don't think that should be there. So replace manager with board? I can yeah, tell well, you. No, we don't want to put the manager with that can, kind of authority. I can em tell Emily, you. Emily, can, can, you, <clears throat> can you refuse me water service on my parcel because you don't like the way I'm using it? Well, I think that that comes into the enforcement provisions of these new regulations. Right? Yeah. Whether that's going to be up to the local agency's authority or... I mean, I'm with you, Bill. Strike that whole last section of that paragraph because I don't think that that you can legally take my water away. You can penalize me for not using it correctly, and I don't know what that penalty would be, but I don't think you can shut my water off if I'm paying for that service. Yeah, because, and that's what it says, refuse delivery. Yeah, I don't think you can do that. So the, the only time I've seen this used was... <coughs> There was a person who had a massive leak on their other side that was washing out a road. That's not who, true. Who refused. I can tell you when it was used on me by George. When I first <coughs> moved on to my property, the previous owner built his house next door. And when he was pouring concrete, he entered into a pipeline agreement with PID to run the, the fire hydrant around to his new parcel. And he never did it, and I wasn't aware of that, okay? But he asked me if he could run a two-inch PVC line down to his property to pour concrete, and I said, go ahead. I came home as 20-acre parcel. I came home one day through the other way and noticed that a lot of my landscaping was dead or dying because somebody had shut off my water. And that person was George, and when I called him on the carpet for it, he said, it's a violation for you to give water from your parcel to another parcel, and that's why I shut off your water. Yeah, that's and, a different provision, though. Well, I was using it not in accordance with what he decided I should be doing, and he shut me off. That, that's in a different one where you're not allowed to, uh, to your water service will, shall be on the, the water shall be used on the parcel. No, but he didn't pay for it. Ask you for the, the nope, excess. Shut it off. The excess was used on wow. that where the road was running off. That right, he was refusing to fix the leak, and it went on for like two or three weeks. Yeah, and and it was damaging property. Sure, and we felt like it was an excessive use of water. Well, see, that that definitely is. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah, I that's the only think, time I've seen that provision. I just <laughs> think these things should come back to the board, or maybe the water conservation. Or our committee could review it, but in the meantime, I'd like to see that struck. The whole last remove. sentence no, could be removed. Sentence, yeah. it, it could takes be the removed. Away from the manager. It revolves it back to the board, which means the board can review the regulations, which I'd like to see us review is the regulations on drought control, which I've asked for in the past, but have never seen them. They're not in the bylaws. So. Well, we we can declare here. we can here. declare a drought emergency. They're in the urban. Well, I guess yeah. I've got a yeah. piece of that. We're all here. Um, when that was passed, I've gone through two urban water plans since I've been on the board, and both of them were changed. This is 2015. Previous. Okay. Well, then maybe we need to revise the urban water plan too. But. Uh, well, that's where the regulations are for droughts, and we certainly need to. Work I, I think we ought to wait for this water conservation plan to come out from the state, and we can look at look at some of the verbiage there. And I think we might be able to tailor some of that language in that and plug it into our uh, our own uh, policies here. I like that idea. I, I'd like to make a motion that the district that we strike the district reserves the right to refuse delivery of water when it appears and strike out the part to the satisfaction of the manager that the proposed use or method of use will require excessive quantities of water. And it just says the district. It doesn't, you take out the, to the satisfaction of the manager. Nobody's going to second. And in a way, yeah, uh, when it, so right after, when it appears, take 
to the satisfaction of the manager. It appears the, yeah, that the proposed, yeah, just to yeah, the satisfaction of the manager. The manager to the satisfaction of the manager. Strike that one, two, three, four, five, six words, letters, words. Um, I'll, I'll second that just to keep it going. Can we clarify that the, the, the district, you should probably state that that would be the board? Well, the district, the district is, is, the is the board, and the board is the district. <laughs> Above, yes, it does mention sure. board. Okay. So the board. I, have, I have no objection to what you're trying to do, which is make that a decision of the board. But if we yep. could just say the district reserves the right to refuse delivery of water when it appears to the satisfaction of the board that the proposed use or method of use will require such excessive quantities. Oh, right so, with me. oh yeah, right. yeah. I think it does that, the same thing. That is cleaner, isn't it? You're, you yeah. know, you may have a new district manager here. That so of the manager be changed to of manager. of the board. Okay. Yeah, I think I like that too. Yeah. I have one other question when I was reading it seems a little bit interesting on the second line of that it says a portion of the water to the land and or the customers to the land how often do you deal with the land um you know, does the land ever write a check for water? Can you get into discussion with them? No, uh, we lien the land. <laughs> we lien the property. So the physical property, yeah. but that's not what it says. Leaning it, but but the, the truly the the parcel itself is our customer. Thank you. It's not the individual. We're not going to get oh, to mine. Are that's we? what that is. Hmm? We're not going to get to mine at all, are we? Yeah, no, we will. <laughs> we'll just see what happens. It's got to get better. So just to clarify, we're saying <laughs> the board reserves the right to refuse delivery of water when it appears that the proposed use or method of use will require such excessive quantities of water that it will constitute waste. Right? That's what it says. Oh, Is that what, what you want it to be? Yeah, that's it. That's fine. Okay, and that was that what your motion would be then? Yes. All right. Perfect. Then I and I seconded it, and so all those in favor say aye. Well, well Oops. And any further discussion on that? No. Nope. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> we move to all those. Do we still have a comment? Period, did you say? Well, I... Oh, you close it? Okay. No, if you need to say something. I, I just want to say that it seems like we're going through this policy manual and stripping things that have a reference to the district manager, and I am not in support of that. We are out looking for a new district manager, and I'm going to put a lot of faith and confidence in that person that we select, okay? And I don't have, you know, whatever the past was was the past with former managers, <laughs> Okay, so I am not in in um, in favor of going through this step by step through all these policies and stripping. It's not all about that. Well, okay, this it is may one, not be, Wait, but it sure appears to me. Go it. This is it's one. All about George. Oh, okay, but I'm just saying that I we should have faith in the person that we are going to hire to make decisions for us because we can't make all these decisions. Okay. No, I understand so that. That's. That's, that's the point I want to make. All right. Thank you. Call, call for the question. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Aye. Okay, it's three to two. It's carried. Thank you. Next one is 6.6 .6 water service. And I have to. Uh, da -da -da -da. And water service accounts defined as those using water in two or more acres for <coughs> legal agricultural endeavor. We'll leave that alone because Cliff has that later. Uh, I think that's probably the only thing. I don't see anything else in there. So what was your specific point on that one? The specific point is what Cliff's going to bring up about water rates for agriculture endeavor. We okay. have to... I was looking at the language in this one, and um, are, are we regulated now under the Department of Water Resources instead of the Department of Health Services? Well, it says... Um, water Resources Control Board. Yeah. Yeah. Should we change 6 .6 that? 6.6, review and discuss Department of Health Services. we used Services. to be... Yeah, we used that to must be have been your... Not the Department of Health Services anymore. It's Water Resources Control Board. Yeah, they merged them. Uh, so Department we need of Water to change Resources. That. Right. That's right. Water we, could, we could make that small change. Oh, okay. Why don't okay. we make a point? Where is that at? 
It's on page uh, 9466.6. Got it. I it see says it right the there. district operates the system with permits from the state of California, Department of Health Services, and I think it's Department of Water Resources. Yep, that's right. Good catch. Okay. Yep. See how easy that was? Okay. We'll probably agree on something. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay, did I'll everybody that get that, that and understand that? On the, on the water service? Mm -hmm. Yes. Emily, <coughs> any yeah. objection to just saying permits from the state of California, period, since they're always changing their names? <laughs> There's well, virtue this is, in that. This is probably there? pretty pretty permanent change that Water Resources Control Board will. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I can, I'll make that motion. Okay. Make that motion that in Section 6.6 .6 we change uh, Department of Health Services to uh, the Department of Water Resources. I'll second that. Okay, it's, it's water, second, it's but water Resources Control Board. All right, seeing no interest from the public. Water Resources. Okay, I'm sorry. There's no interest from the public to speak to this issue, so all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? I, I meant Thank to you. say aye, and I didn't get it done. Okay. <laughs> because you didn't oppose it, I assumed it was an aye. So. 9.1. Uh, this one will remove manager simply because the word was used twice. <laughs> and no intention about uh, reflecting on a manager. It's just that we had the word twice. Okay. Yeah. So it's just a okay. typo correction. That makes sense. You actually don't have the word twice. <laughs> when, when you put it in a parentheses after it, it just makes clear which, it's like an abbreviation. You see that often. So you say, State Water Resources Control Board, and then behind that would be SWRCB yeah. in parentheses. So I assume you're referring to that manager in parentheses. Yeah, that's me. all. It just didn't make sense to me to see it what twice. What it's saying is district manager for the purposes of this section will be called manager. Um, I don't know if you even remember you know, right say, say it again. Yeah. Uh, 9-4, the manager. So under, yeah, under so it says the manager instead of the district manager. Yeah. Right. Okay, <clears throat> you need to keep that in. Yeah, okay, nine, we'll six. just leave it alone. Right. Then okay. Nine, two. This one is going to, this is another one which we can argue about. The manager shall prepare, maintain, and present to the Board of Rules and Regulation Governing Employment Conditions, salaries, and benefits for employees of the Paradise Irrigation District as he deems necessary. This rules and regulation manager shall be adopted subject to the terms of collecting bargaining agreement from time to time amended by the Board and maintained and described in it at the any rate, I can see on this one um, in Appendix B the the regulations that he's or the contract language that he's required to present to us. But I might change as he deems necessary to uh, with each new contract or something like that. I would. I'm not sure why. I yeah, he deems necessary <laughs> means at any time he could do this, and. Um, <laughs> This goes back to the little thing that I found several months ago on uh, um, merit raises. It's, it's the same thing that was on the merit raises as the manager to deems necessary. And this is basically the same thing. In other words, it gives the manager the opportunity to change wages. It doesn't have to have board. No, it actually board. doesn't. It doesn't. No, it it doesn't. doesn't. Yeah, it this doesn't. just says that he will report to us uh, – <clears throat> this part that's in Appendix B of our ma policy manual, which are the contractual the contractual language of our MOU, and so it says he'll he'll prepare it, maintain it, and present it to, as he deems necessary. I would change that language to uh, with each new contract, so that you would be updated. That's, 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 okay, that's good language. That sounds yeah. great to me. That's good. Language. Mm -hmm. That does make sense. Or just put a period after district. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I don't even think I, I actually agree with Bill that strike as he deems yeah. necessary. Yeah. Or just put a period there. Just period. Yeah, because period. each time we do get a new contract, it's in the <laughs> new. It has it's to be in the changed new one. as a necessity. But he doesn't. Should say he. He doesn't um, <laughs> present it to the board. We <laughs> yeah. find out when we do I mean, the contract. You can't just willy nilly make those changes anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, the second sentence takes care of that. Says so yes. Right. Your That's right. Bring it to the board. So right. He has to bring it to us. I like Bill's suggestion. Yeah. Okay, let's do okay. that then. What happened? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> it's strike. It turned out good after okay. all. Okay, yeah. so do you want to make a motion? Please. Make a motion. Oh. And Anne is making a motion. Okay. Anne's making a motion. Okay. okay. Uh, I make a motion that in section 9.2, uh, <coughs> this is the first sentence, we strike the words as he deems necessary. I'll second that. Discussion from public? 
None. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, 12.22 um, competitive process, and I think Cliff might have something to say about this, but it's what page is that on? 114. Yeah, we just amended this. Um, I went through and spent a lot of hours going through the amounts that the manager could approve without. Uh, in fact, I made Kevin come up with the uh, document, the bid form that he had to present whenever we asked for it mm -hmm. to make sure he was doing his due diligence. <clears throat> And I agree with Mark on this one. I don't, I'm not saying it was intentional, Bill, but this seems like trying to limit <coughs> our district manager's ability to run the daily operations without being micromanaged by the board. And okay, I, I, I don't agree. like it. I'll give you the history of it, and you guys can decide what you want. It. <coughs> we had a rather strange meeting one night with old board and Doug, and we tried to lower parts of this money and we went around and around and had my oh god it must have been four motions and when we were done we ended up back here where we started <clears throat> and uh, in fact larry duncan made a suggestion that it go to fifty thousand dollars <laughs> and, and so <laughs> that was an interesting experience but what in reality happened is and maybe the new manager wouldn't abuse it but any um this $25,000 or $1,000 for any item, 5000 for any item, and up to 25000 Then it goes right down to D. It says in excess of 5000 written bids, prizes, all the things that Cliff wanted shall be secured and the board shall award the contracts. The managers and E, the managers authorized to prove excess of 5000 in the case of emergency. And that was there. Now the old board is the one that raised him to go to 25000 and it was abused. Um, it was abused. Yeah, he bought things without. But it's five now, board, so. Without the board's approval, and yet this in here had said that, and I think we were trying to get it down to something like ten thousand dollars, and different things happened that uh, we found out after the fact, and it was, it was, it was my way of putting things. It was a hole in the bottom of the boat. The board lost control, and the manager was in full control, and he went out and done things that he thought was necessary, and not all the board members agreed. And unfortunately, we were a minority. Uh, and that's where I'll leave it. If you guys... To me, to me, it seems inappropriate. All of them seem appropriate. But. Me too. I, I'd, like to, I'd like to make one comment. So when I came on the board, the very first thing that I did was review the policies and procedures manual, especially in this area, because I was concerned about items being purchased uh, from the uh, water treatment plant without uh, proper bidding. Mm -hmm. And we noodled through all of that. We came to a very good agreement on everything. We modified all of this. We put in some checks and balances. Okay. And I've got to say that since I've been on this board and since we did this, I have not seen this abused even once. In fact, um, I, they've performed exactly like Since they the should have. Since the board has been here, no, it hasn't yeah. been but, but, but the board, the new board didn't stop. The management was still there. I didn't see George abuse it since we made those changes. And I have definitely not seen no, Kevin no, abuse it or Jim Passanese or anybody at the water treatment plant or here. And in okay. fact, I've seen them go out of their way to show uh, the board that they are doing their due diligence. And well, I, I feel like this is a slap in the face saying, thanks for doing a good job. We don't trust you now. We're going we're gonna to shave it even more. That's my opinion. Uh, I just think it's uh, an opportunity for somebody to abuse it, and it was abused with an old board. The board changes its makeup and gives a rubber stamp to everything and doesn't ask all the hard questions you asked, Cliff. I was so impressed with what you did and how you did it to get it straightened out and this here. But I still sit here and go, okay, 
we, it says 25000 for any expense necessary in the operation and maintenance of the district treatment and distribution <coughs> system. Completely at uh, the approval of the district manager. And I'm going, wait a minute, under the present administration and after you guys came, under George, with the same thing, it wasn't abused. It has been abused in the past. But but this is not the board. <coughs> well, this is. Well, this is this is the district manager has nothing to do with the board. You're saying don't let the district manager do this because you can't trust the board is what I just heard no, you say. No, that was the old board who voted and gave George okay, anything. Can, but, can I pull I'm this? I'm not saying this board at all. Can I pull this back to a focal point? If, if, um, if there is a motion that you feel appropriate, Bill, go ahead and make it. Otherwise, we need to keep moving. Okay, I'd say that. Um, 5000 up to 10000 for any expense necessary to the operation and maintenance of the water treatment and distribution system. Is there a second? Dies for lack of a second. Any other motions from anybody or just leave well, it I, as I it a, is? I have a comment. I'd like to raise a, a, an amount here. <laughs> but it's a small amount. The petty cash account, I think we ought to have $100 in the petty yeah, cash the instead of 50 collection. That's petty the next cash, one, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Kevin's going to speak to that's that. That's the next one. Yeah. yeah. Next one. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, can, can I just state that, uh, you know, there's some accusations that <coughs> there was a violation of the purchasing policy. I've never seen a violation of the purchasing policy. If, the, if he feels like the previous board didn't do their job and to vetting and rubber stamping and different things like that, that's not a violation of the purchasing policy because right. that's a board decision. No, didn't, didn't, but didn't violate it. What I'm talking about, he's using, yeah, I think we understand. And purchase things. That it, we, the board, found out after the fact what was. Well, on. We, we've, we have an internal control audit every year, and we've always passed, and our internal controls well, are tight on different all things the like purchasing. that. We've, we've moved on, we hope, and we'll have no problems yeah. like that in the future. Yeah. Yep. So 12.26 petty cash. Uh, so is, that, is, that a, is there general consensus that we're going to leave this? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Go on. Okay. Thank next you. one. Next one is petty cash, and Kevin was with Dan and I when we talked about this, and he has his ideas on how to handle this. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that we should. I, I agree with you on the petty cash on the increase. Uh, you know, obviously, really, it's not used very often. It truly isn't. The only time it's really used is for maybe someone goes out and buys pizza or something, we reimburse them. But now with the district credit cards, it makes it really simple yeah. where sure. there's just not a lot of petty cash that flows right. anywhere and in and, in and out of anything. So um, We have know. 200 at the senior center, and it's substantially a smaller operation than this. But anyway. <laughs> But, but with, with the district cards, it really does cut down on the petty cash uh, requirements for a lot of different reimbursements because if someone, <laughs> we, we have them for most people, we have great control over them, and so if they want to buy pizza, right. there's a credit card. If there. somebody comes in and pays their bill in cash, <coughs> okay, their water bill in cash, and they give you a $100 bill, and their bill's only $65, then we have to give them petty cash. Is that correct? Or? Well, we have cash on no, hand. Have oh, that's yeah. cash. Yeah. They have yeah. the cash yeah. on hand. That's yeah. different. Okay. That's yeah, different. we keep our tills full of yeah. 300 yeah. every night. Oh, okay. I so 300, know. we start with 300 every night. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. It's a different yeah, accounting different. system there. Yeah. Okay. Did you have any specific request on this one? On the petty cash <laughs> amount? No. Kevin did in that meeting. He, I think he wanted to raise it. Uh, yeah, we talk, you, I, I think hundred dollars would be better. Okay. I mean, yeah. Sounds appropriate. Yeah. So motion. That's all that motion. Is. Motion. Yeah, motion. Yeah, make a please. motion that we raise uh, the petty cash amount to one hundred dollars from fifty dollars. That's uh, policy number twelve point two point six. I'll second that. Okay, it's moved and seconded. Any public comment? None. Uh, any further questions? None. All those in favor say <laughs> aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, Fourteen. Or uh, Kevin again is going to speak to this. We he did when we were <coughs> going through it. Um, yeah. What page is that on? Now? Uh, 126. Yeah. 126. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not suggesting any change to this, uh, other than that uh, I did. It was it was out of out of date when the last time I gave it to you. I think I was a couple months behind on my treasurer's uh, yeah. report when it came to the investment transactions. Um, it actually I, I, specifies the time you're supposed to have the reports. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. That's what we so shame about. on you. Don't ever uh, move, do that again. Yeah. Moving right next. along. I don't, I don't suggest any change, though, on that. Okay. I think it's stable. I don't so okay. four, yeah. 14 period? Was that? So, uh, yeah, now yeah, we're on the reserve policy. Oh, reserve fund. Yeah. Yeah. 14 <laughs> reserve policies. Yeah, I, 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 can, I remember what you wanted to do on this one. Um, <laughs> well, I know that there was a, a one in here that stated dis general manager, and it should be district manager. Yeah, that's one yeah. of them. Okay. And so, All the way whatever through. the motion is, if you can just say wherever it states general manager shall be changed to district manager, okay. it'll cover it all in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, Ian. Um, well, I, was, oh, I have questions. Oh, 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 no, no. Okay, I go ahead. Make I was going to make a motion right? that um, we amend the Paradise Irrigation District Reserve Fund policy to state in any instance where it states general manager to change it to district manager. I'll second that. Mm -hmm. Okay, would have seconded. Uh, any public comment? Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Okay. While we're still on this reserve fund policy, yeah. on page 142, the capacity fee fund, Yeah. I know we, we did some kind of change with that. Uh, my question is, have we approved any expenditures from this fund <coughs> in this last fiscal or even up so far this fiscal year? I know we used to actually... This says that we'll actually keep it there, but I, I think we've been we, spending we, it as fast as we, we... Well, we spent a, a ton of it based on that process water recycle project. Right, but, we haven't but, taken present, any but in, present have policy. We? The small, it's very, very small, yeah. if anything, that we brought in. Huh. Um, and I think the, the going forward, uh, my recommendation <clears throat> is that we spend it <clears throat> on pipeline replacement. And it makes it simple because then it's used on capacity related mm -hmm. projects and mm -hmm. then you're not building up this fund that has restrictions on it. Mm -hmm. You rather keep your funds that have no restrictions on it liquid rather than keeping your other funds with restrictions on it. Okay. Right. So I, I don't think this reserve, the mm -hmm. policy for this fund as stated on 142 actually goes along with that. Uh, approval for expenditures from the facility shall be required. Affirmative. All investment earnings policy. The district. Uh, In a duly noticed public meeting. Yeah. And then. Uh, I'll take a. Let me. Let me take a look at it. Yeah, and maybe I'll bring it back to you yeah, on that. I would the, suggest that. Okay. Other than that, um, the amounts on 134 and the way it's aggregated look pretty good to me. In fact, I think some of them are kind of conservative. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the problem I have is that we've yet to put any funds into this, into the, all these different funds that have uh, target max, minimum operating budget, water revenue, et cetera. I would rather we have a, in the general fund, we have a target for reserves and that we can be, and then the funds can be put out by the board under the pol rest of the policies and we don't have money stuck in these different funds that we might have to figure out how to get. And we, these funds have been in since the, before the recall, and this was part of what the old board and wanted. And the one that should stay would be what we have, the Paradise Fire Department Reserve Fund. Um, and then the rest of these funds and the one, the, the pipelines what we just talked about. But the rest of them, I think, could go away without any difficulty and can be replaced with just uh, saying we, in the general fund we want so much reserves there, cash reserves. Then they can go any direction, the board or the management wants to suggest the funds to be used at, and you have a, a, a reserve, like if you want to have a million dollars in reserves or $500,000. But we've got to have some sort of reserve policy and actually put some money in it right now. The weakness we have is we don't have any, as far as I can tell, other than just what I talked about in the general fund, so to speak, we have money we could pull if we had an emergency. Right, Kevin? Operating fund. Yeah, well, operating fund. but, but we're going to have to redo first. all of our, uh, our rate fees here because they all have... Some of them are specific. Reserve surcharge. Yeah. Some of them are specific. Yeah. Yeah. But the so money isn't actually... That, where's then? the money going? Uh, it's going, I'll, I'll, funds? It's I'll, going uh, to the reserve. It's investment. I mean, uh, if you want a highlight of, of why a reserve policy is important, I'll give you, I'll give you it. 
First of all, it's good business practice. Yeah, it's you good have business to have practice it. to yeah. to. You to have do to have it. It doesn't tie the board's hand by any stretch by yeah. uh, designating funds into really any one of these buckets. Uh, you can, you know, you can go to a hundred and ten percent of operational reserves if that's what you want to do. You this this is a <clears throat> guideline for it. The other thing too is. It, it proves to the public that if you have, let's say we have $30 million in reserves, right? <laughs> and we are piling all this money into reserves. They're going to go, why? Would show me where you need these. And we're going to go, here's our reserving policy. Here's the policy that we've adopted that shows why we need these funds. These are our and targeted goals. Yeah. 30 to $50 million of reserves is not out of this world by any stretch of the imagination. There's a person, there's uh, some districts that have a half a billion in reserves. Yeah, there's some that don't borrow any, they just pay. They just pack it away and then yeah. pay for everything as That's they right. go. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But they do it based on a plan. <laughs> And this is your plan. Yeah. Um, and to answer your question, we do have, uh, we've almost met the goal of 17% in operational uh, fund. Mm -hmm. And we're starting to put money now into the water rate stabilization fund. Um, so it's a trickle down effect, but it doesn't mean that's where it has to stay. Right. By stretch. So it's not, re it's not like restricted. It is, it money is can loose. be moved at our discretion, but it's a goal and it's a good management tool because when you put a piece of pipe in the ground, it's not going to last forever. Eventually, it's going to have to be replaced. When we well, I, I buy a truck, it's not going to last forever. It has to be replaced. So we should have <coughs> reserves goals set in place to address those. It's well, just good we, accounting. we did have an operation fund before this started. But if, if this board wants to follow this and actually put money into those accounts and, and function with it, and you want to give Kevin, a, his chief financial officer, instructions to do that, then I'll sit here and wait and see what happens. Yes. Well, 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 yeah. well the instructions are already what, here. I think, it's I already been approved. Saying, Bill, I think what they're saying here is like there is fluidity. the same amount of money is there. It's just that in the accounting ledger, we're breaking it out and sure. showing where it's all. But we haven't until well, just recently. We well, haven't done that. Now, we but now we are. All the reserves were depleted during the drought. Yeah. And thank goodness we had back. some. It wasn't. That other I, I got my own opinion on how the reserves went down okay. the hole. But <laughs> it's uh, another whole topic. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so we have a done? motion on the table to change uh, general to district. To district. We did that already. That's we done. already yeah. did that. That's already yeah. done. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. So we're done. Good. So and awesome. and Kevin's going to come back to us with the capacity fee yep. policy change, maybe. Right. Yep. And that's well, it. it. It says in your capacity. I'll, my last thing, and then we'll go home. <coughs> Assets of restricted reserve fund shall be held separately from the general fund and shall only be used for the stated purposes it's of restricted the specific reserve. reserve fund. Now that's not saying you can pull money out of those funds to go willy nilly sure. anywhere you want. That's what he's going to look into, potentially change, and bring it back to us. Okay, you're going to do that, Kevin? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and, and well, that's, that's what I'm going to identify right what there. they're for. Okay. You Perfect. can't change the, the, the characteristics of a capacity fee fund. It has to be used right. on capacity related projects, right. but I'll make right. sure that it's stated in there. That's what, what it'll be okay. used for. Okay, are we done? Next. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. And the uh, ad hoc committee is gone. So no more work for it to do. <laughs> Good. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> okay, 10. Uh, 10B, review and restructure irrigation and residential rates. Uh, Cliff. Okay, over to Cliff. Okay. So the current rate structure created by PID under the section entitled Irrigation, Residential, Recreation District, School District Rates violates, in my opinion, California Proposition 218. We charge rates to some entities that were grandfathered in years ago, which are approximately one-fifth of the rates that we charge to the bulk of our rate payers. Our state voters approved Prop 218 in 1996 to limit unreasonable fees charged to property owners for water. The legislation clearly states that fees not exceed the proportional cost of the service attributable to the parcel. You simply cannot charge one individual or entity more or less than another for the same water service. There's no grandfather clause in the legislation. How do we justify charging $1.62 per 100 cubic foot of water as shown under the rate schedule as business, multifamily dwelling, 
residential care facilities landscape when we are only charging the irrigation, residential irrigation, recreation district, and school district rates 35 cents per 100 cubic feet of water. It, it does not seem fair to me, and I've done a tremendous amount of review and on the internet and everywhere I could put my hands on something. Every court case that I could read about, Emily will appreciate that, um, I can find nothing that makes this defensible in a court of law. And in fact, um, you can go to the point of saying that, well, we have money in savings that generates revenue, and that's what we're using, and it's not on the backs of the ratepayers. But that's no more legitimate than saying that anything else that this district owns is being used instead of taking the money from the ratepayers. The ratepayers own the district and they own the money that's in the investments as well as the equipment and the personnel that we use to run this district. And if that money is making revenue for us, that revenue belongs to all of the ratepayers and should go equally back to the ratepayers. You can't say, we're going to keep that from you and artificially say that the cost to give you water is more expensive because we're subsidizing this group over here with that money. It doesn't apply. And I think we need to abandon the irrigation rates. We need to make everybody pay the same rate as Prop 218 says we should. And we should calculate the savings by raising everybody to that rate and then distribute that equally amongst all of the rate payers, which will give everybody a reduction in what they're paying right now, other than the people who are getting the irrigation rate. And I say this, let, let me preface this by saying that my water bill is $1,500 or more per month, and I've been paying that for 17 years on my property. And I'm asking you to do away with it. I never got the irrigation rate. It would be easier for me. And in fact, if I read the verbiage, I, was, I asked early on in 2000 when I bought my property for the irrigation rate, and I was told, we don't give those out anymore. However, I'm reading this right here, and it says that irrigation and residential irrigation water service accounts are defined as those using water on two or more acres for any legal agricultural endeavor. I believe I qualify and have qualified for 17 years. No. Excuse me. It got changed. Okay, well, what I'm reading right now says I'm qualified for yeah, the irrigation now, rate. Okay, and what I'm saying is, is it's not fair. Why should I get a better rate than the rest of the rate payers when Prop 218 says we all need to be charged the same amount for the same service? And I say we need to take away the irrigation rate and give everybody a fair rate, give everybody a, a fair reduction. So just, just a little background. There was a decision by the board <clears throat> to carve out specific revenue <clears throat> that the board received that they felt was non-rate revenue that was segregated from the Prop 218 requirement for that revenue. That revenue then was um, given to subsidize irrigation, residential irrigation, and recreation and school district um, <clears throat> accounts for quantity use. They've also used that same revenue to subsidize the $10 uh, yeah. cap right. fee. Yeah. Um, so that was the decision of the board during the last rate increase. So that's just the background of it. Cliff is correct when he did come in 2000 that he probably was told that that irrigation rate was closed because it was. And then we had a petition to the board from another person. I don't remember when, but the board decided to open it back up. And then they added, I believe, three or four since then to an irriga a residential irrigation rate. Um, so, and then they decided to, because he used to st state that the irrigation rate was only for two acres of of of, of agriculture for sale. Hmm. 
And then we had a guy that was doing two acres that was not selling it. So they decided to change the policy to allow just for two acres of agriculture endeavor. So there has been some mm -hmm. history behind that, and that's the history behind that's what I meant about you being yeah. eligible because it was changed for pasture. Anything yeah. was an agricultural use. Before that, it was not. Right. They, well, they I'll just take pasture. a refund back when you change it for pasture, then I'll settle for that. <laughs> so, so that's the history behind it. Uh, if we were to change this, I do believe it would require a Prop 218 uh, hearing. Um, because you are raising the rates of specific uh, rate payers. And, um, and then so we would, that's the direction that would be given tonight if that's something that you guys are wanting to, to accomplish. I, I have a question for Emily. That, with that small of uh, an amount of rate payers on the irrigation rate, does that constitute a 218 hearing? I think it would because some of your customers would be receiving a rate increase. So you'd have to change your rate structure. Even if some of them presumably would see a decrease. I don't, I mean, it, in that situation, it may be a very successful process, but you'd still have to go through the process. And I have a question for you. The policy that we have right now, is, is it in violation of Prop 218? I don't believe so because the rate is the rate. You're taking non Prop 218 revenues and property taxes, I believe, That's for the what most it is. part, yeah. and using that money to subsidize mm -hmm. the rate. So if, um, you know, and that's that's the two hundred and fifty thousand or two twenty five we get from property taxes every year. That's that was the main portion that was carved out, and then recreation revenue was. And was do we use out. all of that? Uh, I think all of it is actually. I mean, with the two with between the two, the two now, them, between cap and yeah, it's pretty okay. much used, used up. Yeah, that's why they limited the cap to fourteen, blah 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 blah, because they used up all of the monies that was left over and specifically put it in a specific amount of cap people that are allowed to get that $10 because that's the only oh. amount of money that money we get because they will put it yeah. up to that Okay, right. thank you. It is yeah. a policy decision, though. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, when I was on the cemetery board years ago, PID, that was the years that the PID passed a rate increase without telling anybody, and the place <laughs> ended up with uh, an old offices with glass up to protect the employees and so forth long before Kevin got here. And at any rate, it was cheaper for the cemetery district to drill their own well, yeah. put all the water except drinking water, which is still PIDs. And we got rid of the big, you know, three inch or whatever it was meter and cut our costs appropriately. And within three years, we paid for the well. And so if you take the park and rec district and they get the kind of rate increase you're talking about, it would probably be in their best interest to drill some wells. There is no, uh, where well, you know there's water, I should say, but there's no restrictions inside the district by this district on For wells. wells. That's true. And they were even not in the well thing that the rest of the valley is going through and making special districts and all sorts of politics you wouldn't district. believe. But we're omitted from that because we're in the foothills and so we don't have to worry about testing wells and see how the water level is drawn down and all that. And the one thing that Dustin said when we were going through this is that you want some large use rate payers to give you quality or quantity of water for your when you go in and ask what we're doing now going through the process of trying to secure our water rights. Mm -hmm. So that we can show there is a demand for X thousands of feet of water that goes through the system. Um, those were the different arguments that were used with this. The changing it to two acres was <coughs> we had people we turned down that came in with an acre and a half or so forth. I remember one fellow particularly coming to the meeting and everybody was sorry, but they wouldn't get off the two acres. Um, but it means that, and on the other side of it, if you have five acres of irrigated pasture, you can get this ag rate. But if you figure it out, it, unless you're a really good farmer and you do fertilizer and you have deep soils and everything, you can't pay for this water with pasture. You're better off to go buy the hay at the feed store or from mm -hmm. a rancher and feed hay and just have the rains bring you in your pasture. So you, you have all these things acting in it. 
and I'm not. I understand what Cliff's doing because we. I went through it with the whole board, talking about this, and it took several meetings to resolve it, and to come up with this simple policy. But yeah, you wouldn't have been a. I think that was only about four years ago, Cliff. So you wouldn't be able to go back for 17 years. I'm sorry. Question I've got, Cliff, is I, I'm assuming that what you're proposing it wouldn't just be people that have pastures. You're talking schools, churches, hospital, everything <laughs> like yep. this. Yes, I'm major. talking that the, in my opinion, the irrigation rate violates Prop 218 because you're charging some people a dollar sixty-two a hundred cubic foot and some people thirty-five cents. Well, I didn't. And, remember and, how and in my it. opinion, any money that is generated as revenue by the district no matter how it's generated, is revenue. And we cannot run this at a profit, as I've been told many times. And so if we're generating revenue, that revenue is generated by the efforts and the assets of the district. And the district says that we cannot charge one rate payer <coughs> a higher rate on the backs of subsidizing another rate payer. And you can't hide it in my opinion, by saying, well, the money didn't come from the rate payers. The hell it didn't. If, if we didn't pay you the money, you wouldn't be able to buy the equipment that we just mm -hmm. authorized tonight. Okay? So that equipment, if it's ever used by anybody to make money, that money is money that is revenue to the district and has to be given back equally to all of the rate payers. You can't just say, we're, we're, we're detecting leaks now on the other side of the meter for profit, and we're going to use that to subsidize the irrigation guys even more and lower their price to 20 cents a 100 cubic foot because it didn't come from Cliff, and that's not fair. got a question for you, Kevin. I would assume that these larger institutions that we're talking about do pay a reduced rate, yes? I mean, like Feather River Hospital doesn't. No. Not Feather River, no. It the only ones that get reduced rates are ag. Yes, I understand that. Residential irrigation, um, parks and rec, and school districts. So school. School is, the, is a very large one. That's going to be quite a bit. Huh? Yeah, the schools would take a big, big hit. Huge. Because of the large and the Parks and Rec would take a big hit too. Yeah. Huge yeah. also. Yeah. Yeah. Because you've got of, private in you've got Mindens, you've got... Mendens is on there. You've got, you know. Mendens has its own well. <laughs> he is on the irrigation rate. Well, Most and of well. I got a well too. Orchard. I still spend fifteen hundred a month. I got a damn good. Not well. a, not a lot because if it's only if you're only using you're using less than two hundred thousand dollars out of a uh, you know three million. It's not. It's not. A, it's not. Yeah, a it's tremendous. not real it's, significant. It's a, it's and and typically, um, water districts do. Um, subsidize schools and Pay parks and rec, and agencies, even yeah. even where I came from, fire departments, golf courses, you name it. But um, it just promotes goodwill. Well, I realize that, but so would giving that guy the ag rate at a 1.6 acres, we but we you drew the line there. No, we didn't give him the ag rate. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> no. You drew the line and didn't give it to him. Why couldn't you have been... Respectful to that poor guy. We I mean, were, as we said, no. Everybody was very <laughs> kind to him. Okay, we've kind of beat this up a little bit. Do you have? Oh, I, I just going to say, just some of these budgets are pretty tight. I, I mean, the school district, PRPDs. Yeah. You know, so just like us, I mean, they're looking at every nickel. They're struggling. So right. yes. Yeah, so, um, but I, I can see something maybe where we we talked about this a little bit, Kevin and I did. Uh, maybe have a sunset. Maybe we sunset this out at some point, you know, in five years or something like that. You know, give people some lead time. Opportunity to a lead nothing, time that, put it you know, into their proposed future budget. Yes, sure. exactly. <laughs> yeah. They're not, they're not going to find an alternate source in that time. <coughs> that was yeah. kicking the can. That would potentially give them that, time. That, right. My suggestion uh, to Mark was if, if it was the board's pleasure to, to kind of get rid of this rate eventually, mm -hmm. to maybe... Uh, phase it out so you go uh, you know it's 35 cents today it's 45 cents tomorrow it's 55 cents that that way they can they can absorb it through right. budget processes and, and maybe easily kind of work their way through it and then at the end of that you would just sunset it out but yeah. right. that, was a, that was just that was just and we wouldn't have to go through 218 to do that we oh we would because okay. you're raising the rate on them yeah, every okay. single year All right. <coughs> okay 
May I open well, it to the public? Sure. Sure. Do you have any comments? Oh. <laughs> okay. I could talk agriculture for a while, but we don't want to hear it. <laughs> Thank you, Ward. <laughs> Okay, well, I kind of think that we've massaged this enough. Yeah, and do we, we can't raise the rate because without a 218, so we'd have to say that that's what we're going to do, entertain a 218. Yeah. That's what well, I'm let's see if we even choose to do that. That's right. So why don't you, it seems this is your desire. Why don't you make a motion? Let's see where it goes. Okay, I make a motion and we calculate the amount of additional revenue that would be received if the irrigation <coughs> rates were raised to... A dollar sixty-two per hundred cubic foot. Raise the irrigation rates to the same rate as all rate payers. Reduce all rates to equal the savings realized by the adjustment. And I'm not hearing a second. Let's visit this again in a while because there is some merit to it. There, there, there is some merit. Not, not at this time. Right. Thank, okay. you. thank you, Cliff. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, Cliff. All right, uh, 10-D. Mr. Manager. 10-C. Uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot you. I That's all right. 10-C. <laughs> Policy, inside. yeah, okay, do that. <laughs> okay, and this was um, um, just a way of trying to um, have our committee meetings and staff mm -hmm. time be just a little bit more streamlined and efficient, hopefully. Um, that I realized we had quite a few standing committees that some never met, and I thought some of the topics and business from some of the standing committees could be incorporated into just these uh, few committees. And um, if the topics or business were needed to be addressed, something came up, an ad hoc committee could be created from the, the remaining standing committees. So that's what this is about, and the only other change I did is I changed the name of the recreation Paradise Lake to just Paradise Lake because it would absorb the business of the water supply and the botanical garden, and community relations would absorb the business of the water conservation and a town liaison. So I just tried to... Mm -hmm. So does your, does your vision seem to be that it would reduce the number of meetings or just you would consolidate when you have a meeting, you'd pack more into it? Or? It, would, it would do both. It would reduce the, possibly the number of meetings and also um, from the, the, the remaining standing committee, the ad hocs would be created to take care of that business. I like that idea. I'd like to add one thing to it. Uh, we have a standing administration committee and yet we created an ad hoc committee to do the business of the standing committee. Uh, nothing personal, but <coughs> you and Dan had an ad hoc committee on the policies and procedures manual. He just said that when through. Dan and I are on the standing committee for that. He just eliminated that one and, this evening. Yeah. And I'm just, <laughs> so I, I like what you're doing. Uh, there's just way too many committees, ad hoc and standing, and we do need to reduce it down to a, an amount that makes sense and make sure that we don't create a new committee, either standing or ad hoc, unless it doesn't truly fit into the category of an existing standing and, committee. And so this would take the water conservation uh, committee and put it under the community relations. And so this action would dissolve four committees. And so if the, if the board chooses to go along with this, then the next uh, thing we would have to do is recreate the Water Conservation Committee as the Demonstration Garden Committee and ad hoc under um, community relations. But since we all have, we have present members that we all have a project, we would be with the same members right now, the public members and um, the two directors, myself and Director Kellogg. If we only have two people on each of these, though, we're not going to be including the whole board, are we? Because You have two directors and then staff and maybe members of the public. It's the director's choice if they want to have members of the public on their committee. <clears throat> yeah, but I mean from the board representation. Yeah, two directors, that's true. I'd like to address it, I guess. Sure. Uh, 
the Water Conservation Committee is actually one of the younger committees in the district. It was uh, put together because of the drought and used as largely an education committee as it started out. Uh, Seth served on it along with uh, Doug Flesher. Doug was the chair and he brought in these people that are volunteers to the committee basically. Uh, and it was set up to be an educational thing for the community. And the idea was after the garden was finished, which it, with the dry weather we might actually get that done by spring, um, that it would continue with the educational side of it as far as using the garden as part of the educational thing with sponsoring tours and seeing to its maintenance. We've talked about having volunteers in the community maybe helping with the maintenance of it. Um, it hasn't gone anywhere yet with the committee. We're trying to get the, all the details with the little garden lined up and completed. And it would continue on, probably only meeting a few times of the year to have educational programs that tie in with whatever we want to. The original committee had educational meetings on Doug Rannan, and they're on, he picked people out of the community at Butte College and so forth to help with the meetings to educate on different sprinkler <coughs> systems and other things where you can conserve water and talked about other things and started talking about it. This is where a list of plants can come out of it. We will have a list of plants that go into the garden that are various <coughs> using. So, and we are even talking about how to maintain <coughs> trees with uh, different types of irrigation system, which nobody is in the community is doing anything about. It. And we're losing trees all over town. We did find that some of the members of the committee found some excellent pathlands, and they're still looking, as Ward talked about at the beginning of the meeting tonight, to be as handouts to give out, and we would have handouts in the garden. Uh, so to me, I'd like to see the Water Conservation Committee continue. The town liaison committee only meets maybe <coughs> once or twice with the town, and I, I served on it one time, one year. I, I think that can go away or be absorbed very easily into the community relations committee. Um, the Paradise Lake Recreation Committee should retain its name because we do have recreation. We're talking about these trails, whether they come about or not. The botanical garden could certainly be absorbed into that. That's a Basically, we haven't met, we met one time this year, um, and it could be dealt with in the Paradise Lake Committee recreation because basically if we're going into, with the park guard, botanical garden, I, I talked to the new manager about what we planned and he had no objections to it and that was working on the botanical garden <coughs> side of it. They're gonna put in a park, but they haven't been able to find any monies to do that. They did buy access land and they need to log it. But so these could be put right in. It, it's called, after all, the name of it's going to be, uh, what the, it's Lake View, because when you get up there on top, you can see Miguelia Reservoir. Uh, and, and so to me, the name shouldn't be changed, um, but it could absorb the botanical ones and. and so the water and, supply. And water supply, yeah, both of those could go in there. And the finance committee, and I agree, those two committees should be the most, they are the most powerful committees, <laughs> or can be, I guess would be the thing, would remain unchanged, uh, would result in more efficient use of district and staff time. I think just with those minor changes to it and leaving one committee existing, uh, that would be absorbed. And we can change, you know, if it, if it's a problem next year, you can change it um, of the present members in a separate action. And let's see, one or the action requested would be the only one, is it, where is it? Botanical Garden Water Conservation Committee would be left out and let it remain as a standing committee. We have a real good committee right now with the volunteers uh, I've worked with him up there, but I had to get back to my own business. And <clears throat> one of my sons was telling me there was three men working on the gardens yesterday, and uh, volunteers. And that's the way it's coming together. The volunteers are helping to make decisions and how we're going to do things and the work order we're going through. And we even have a lineup on it. So I would, 
And the promise with the committee, as soon as we get this garden up and going, is that we're going to go back to the committee's job of educating the public and trying to come up with other ideas to have the committee look into. I got a question. Uh, are these uh, committees, do they necessarily have to meet monthly? They don't, do they? It's only on call or of necessity that they meet? There's no requirement for a continuous yes, meeting. Yes, I didn't think so. The only reason the water <coughs> conservation meeting is meeting so often is the garden. Because of the garden. As soon yeah. as the garden is gone. But whether it's called water before. conservation or ad hoc garden <coughs> committee, it's still going to do the same work. Yeah. Yeah, I know, except ad hoc is well, temporary. And because and when I, the garden. I'm looking for the long term of the district on education. But water conservation could be handled under community relations. Oftentimes, that's where the, the website and um, um, that's where we're addressing the same subjects. When I'm, I'm on both committees and we're talking about the same, same thing. Same thing all the time. I'm aware of it. Many times <laughs> it's come up in the water conservation committee. I've tried to steer, okay, the con community deal any advertising publicity so forth goes through that committee we're just doing water conservation effort education yeah. and at times i know we get involved but i've tried to make it so that we're not conflicting with your committee's work well would, any other comments please no, yeah. make, um i don't think anybody's trying to take away from what you're doing bill what you're no. doing is great I think what Ann, I agree with Ann. Consolidation. Consolidation is not going to change what you're doing and your outreach to the community. It's just going to put it all under one umbrella so it's a little easier to manage. And, and I, I like that. And I also would like to add that I don't think an ad hoc committee should ever be created for something that could be done in a standing committee. And if it is an ad hoc committee, that means it's short life. It's for one purpose, and when that goal is achieved, it's done. Well, see, the which is what has, this isn't which the is one what happens. Of the yeah. Conservation committee. But they seem to drag out. Well, ours just stopped tonight, just like you said. Yeah, the, the yeah. Other that's one example. Now. Yeah. Uh, that's one example. I was hoping we'd but, get rid of it last yeah. month, but it yeah. came tonight. Uh, as far as the, the, that's the only thing I see. The conservation committee and the name changes from um, at the lake. <clears throat> Because we're doing a great deal of recreation. And well, I just made it Lake Committee because it's going to deal with other subjects besides recreation. If you mm -hmm. put the botanical garden and the water supply underneath it, so I just made, used a more general term. But you could still call it the Lake well, no, the Recreation Committee. Well, no, the botanical committee. garden is another one of these things that's going to be educational and to the public. But it's because there's no funding there, and we have a long-term <laughs> memorandum of understanding with the Park and Rec. Actually, we have to go to Park and Rec to get permission to do anything on PID property that's dedicated to the botanical gardens and the park. So Lakeview Park. It's, they have, well, since you're on the board, I, did I have a presentation by Park and Rec? I know I did to the old board. We, no. Did you have somebody come in and show you their design? Okay. Yeah. Any, yeah, anyway, we'll further discussion. I think. Uh, sure. yeah, give everybody well, a I like the to idea, too, and I, I hear what you're saying, Bill. I, I, you I'm know, game to try. I can see these meetings being longer because you're trying to wrap all these Actually, they've been rather things, short. But, but I, I, I think we can be more efficient if we did this. Um, and I was just going to make a comment. We talked about Megalia Reservoir tonight, so maybe we call this a lakes with the S committee, okay. yeah. <laughs> the Lakes Committee, Since we might have something going in McKinley too. That's a great idea. But I, I hear what you're saying, Bill. I, yeah, I understand that you're worried about the do it justice. And I think we can. It's just that some of these meetings may be pretty, pretty, pretty good. Staff, do you see any downside to any of this? I, 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 there was we, we were stepping on toes there a lot of times, and it got me a little bit nervous about a Brown Act violation because we had three board members talking about a subject before it came to the board. So you had a community relations committee in here that was talking about something, and then you would bring it to the, I was going back uh, <coughs> drought, the water conservation, conservation committee, and, and they were overlapping before any type of discussion with the board. You're so you had three board members in. discussing a topic before, before that. Um, I know I tried every time it came I, I, saying it should go back to community <coughs> relations. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah. Have any part of that? 
Yeah, so it, it's this difficult. might solve that problem. Consolidating yeah. would, would lessen the. Yeah, the other thing, too, is, you know, in just listening to the board a little bit on uh, some of their ideas about, you know, in, in rainy times that we have water, a huge water supply. Yeah, I've heard you guys talk about maybe we need to encourage water usage and encourage. <laughs> and then when we have a lower supply, we're trying to then, you know, discourage, <laughs> sure, discourage. Yeah. And that's where the kind of community relations, I think, is, is appropriate because it's that communication with the community. And it's about how you want to offer that services to that community is really how, what time of year are we or what type of, you know, environment are we in and how that message is kind of. Well, related. the conservation, you can do it two ways. You can make sure that no two members are on both committees. None of the members on either of those committees serve on the other. Sure, no, which would, would we would do. That would take care of the one argument. The other one is that the idea behind the Water Conservation Committee is like the different kinds of water systems that will be operated <coughs> out here, is that that's to show the community that they can use water, let's put it this way, more intelligently, and they can actually expand their gardens and their lawns because of these low rates, yeah. uh, having timing systems and everything else, and won't be using probably any more water or very little water than the existing system. So it goes in it, and that's a long-term mm -hmm. project to affect and it involved. It's the garden was something we started originally as a vegetable garden, and then we couldn't get the financing for a deer fence, and we went off and looked into some, went down to uh, Patrick Ranch, Doug arranged that before he died, and then we went afterwards and saw what they were doing, and then that led us into this other garden. I got a question about the town liaison committee. Uh, what did they discuss? That was uh, the hydrant fund. Yeah, okay. it's the last time we met. Yeah, it was last the time we hydrant met. Fund. Yeah, yeah, those projects. But any time that we have PID town kind of uh, trying to do projects together, then it's it's supposed to be kind of a sit down between the two between <laughs> two committees. So you get basically four board members in there. You know, R two and there two, and then mm -hmm. staff together and. It's to discuss. There's a little joint discussion projects. about the Skyway project. Yeah, too. and then we brought it to the full board for yeah. approval. The only reason I ask that is I would like to have been on the town liaison committee, but I have no interest in being on the conservation committee. But if we do away with that, well, that's fine. Decide. Yeah. We don't have to be on anything. Yeah. Uh, okay, I think we've discussed this amply, open to the public. Yes, thank you. Um, th there is an issue here about how much water is used where. $1,500 a month for water. I'll bet $100 of that is for <coughs> washing clothes, food prep, et cetera. The rest goes out in the yard. Probably. Yeah. So, same thing with most everybody. You know, <coughs> we wash dishes, we take a uh, shower, we brush our teeth. Okay, there's a little bit of water in the house. All the rest is outside. Mm -hmm. So the educational element that we did during the drought was based on how do you properly manage your property so that it looks okay but doesn't use a lot of water. Right. We didn't tell people bathe once a week we did the maybe you Good know if it's yellow one. let it mellow if it's brown it goes down but you know what's the difference between a third of a gallon and two-thirds of a gallon it doesn't count what they use right. outside does and that's what the emphasis was and of course when doug says you know when we're going to do this education thing and and larry duncan would sit there and say you can't teach anybody anything they won't listen <laughs> well guess what they did and we got in the, the height of the drought we got people to understand yeah you don't have to waste water you can use it wisely and if you like what the what the garden club has done with the tours in the last few years we we showed off properties that look pretty good that didn't waste a lot of water so education does work. And whether we're doing it for how many times you flush or wash your clothes or how you maintain a really attractive yard without wasting water, education is important. And I think that's the, that's the primary backbone of what the Water Conservation Committee has done. I mean, I've personally sat in, in Cedar Creek's office for hours on monthly basis talking about what can we say in Water Talk that makes sense to people, that yeah. they'll get it. Thank you for your well, The public does listen, and they took Larry Duncan through him out. So. Thank you, Ward. Okay. Yeah, very much we appreciate your efforts, as always, on that. Are we game to try this and see? I mean, if it fails in yeah. six months, yeah. we throw it out and go back? I've got one question. How okay, yes, I'm sorry. public people are you going to put on the community relations 
<laughs> well, we'll have to go two, two, and no, two, no, and two, and that's it. Directors, public. public. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Public. 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 People from Excuse me. The public. Well, like I don't. Board or some <coughs> volunteers. How many? You don't have any now, do you? We don't have any. Uh, we have people that attend, but not no, any real da members. Dan has attended a few. And uh, Wally. And Wally. Wally. Yeah, just as guests. Yeah, but we don't have any uh, members of the public on that committee right uh, now. We are not restricted on any right. policy of restricting number of people on any committee. So we could have as many as we choose, can't we? No, I don't, but yeah. the, an integral part of the Water Conservation Committee is the volunteers Correct. that are on it. Yeah. Okay? Without them, the committee would be... <coughs> okay. okay. Well, I imagine they wouldn't really care if they were called community relation committee members. Or conservation. Or yeah. conservation. They're still going to do the same thing they were yeah. doing. The goal is still the same. It's just going to simplify the paperwork. Do you understand that? You don't think there'd be a problem? Change the name of the committee. It's the same, so, same okay. committee. You're still yeah. going to do what you were so doing? Yeah. Right. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Shall we, we ready try, try this or? motion? Okay. Motion, please. Okay. Um, I'd like to move to dissolve the Lake Ridge Park Botanical Garden Committee, the Town Liaison Committee, the Water Conservation Committee, and the Water Supply Committee, and to amend the policy manual to reflect these changes as shown below. Do I have to read all those changes? We no. just stipulate. The ones highlighted in red. <laughs> right. You can say as listed in the. Yeah, as listed. Below. Yeah. There you go. Sure. I'll, I'll second I'll, that. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Try Cliff. Uh, all, any, further, any additional questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. One opposition. Just remember next year when we meet and see how this works. <coughs> well, we can do it even sooner. If, if, six, if six months from now, Bill, it doesn't work, we, we go back. And so now we go on right. to page 152. So I move that we create an ad hoc demonstration <coughs> garden committee containing the following members, directors Ann Rice and Bill Kellogg chair, Chuck Bell, Ward Habriel and Mike Spies. <coughs> um, what are you changing here? You're just creating an, a demonstration ad hoc, yeah? Mm -hmm. Because I'm not sure we should specify tonight the names because next month we have, we place all the committees with all the people. But for if this you particular. Want to make this particular one this now. Particular, ad hoc, I don't think this, this would change. Yeah, this particular one I wanted to keep the same members same because we're all yeah, involved sure. in this okay. project. Makes sense. If that's okay with the board. Sure. I'm no problem with that. You just say good to go and it's good to go. Okay. You, good. you can do it on your it's, own. It's it doesn't good to have go. To be a vote. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> done. It is done. Thank done. you, Ann. Thank you. Thanks, Ann. And I'll object to it. Please put that in the record. <laughs> Because you still are a good on that committee and will do a great job, Bill. I don't know if I'm going to be on the committee. <coughs> well, he, he just appointed you. We just appointed you. You <laughs> are officially on you. it. I just we just yeah, named you as don't that. Have to serve, oh no, you okay? don't. <laughs> but we just I'll think about it. Oh, okay. Because okay, you you've done an outstanding it. job, and we want you to continue, please. <coughs> so here we go. Okay. 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 Uh, Ten D. Uh, Kevin. Yep. Uh, Butte County Special Districts Association. Um, <coughs> was, no, this is just the annual membership and dues. Um, so it's that we we are a member of this. It's a it's a group of special districts within Butte County that meets once a month, I believe. Is it once a month or twice a month? And uh, it's basically <coughs> just to kind of go over any issues. It was originally established, I think, to fight a LAFCO type of issue. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, they've had some good speakers and different things like that. So it's just to, to agree that we'll pay the annual dues and be part of it, <laughs> which are $25. Okay. And also that we are, oh, and that's, that's the first one. So let's just stop there. Okay. Do y'all have any questions? So we have to. Uh, <coughs> y'all have any questions because we do need a motion and approval on that. I'll do. I move approval to authorize payment of the annual membership dues to the BCSDA and authorize the interim district manager or authorized representative to execute the certificate of liability coverage form on behalf of the Paradise Irrigation District. Someone would like to second that, please. I'll second that. <laughs> um, any. Further questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 
Thank you. Okay, next one is now that we're official members, uh, <laughs> hey. there's a call uh, for nominations to be on the uh, executive board. Um, and so you can kind of read what the executive board is. It's uh, 11 members, 11 member board, and four directors enterprise, four directors not enterprise. Else would. So we're an enterprise district, just to. So I notice on this, um, it, it states the term is being well, from January 2018 to December 2020. It's but on three years there, it says two here. That's yeah, wrong. yeah. yeah but on the second page, oh, yeah, is. on the sec on mm -hmm. page 156, it says the term under the bylaws will be January 2018 to end December 31st, 2019. That's so, three years. So this is two years, and the other one's three. Yeah. So, so which, which is it? Which is it? Nineteen. 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 Okay, so maybe we two years in. need to change two years. this. Yeah, two years. Okay, I just wanted to make yeah, that one correction. Place, I noticed that one place said two and one said three yeah, also. Said three. Hmm. <laughs> so if we're going to entertain nominations, um, I would like to nominate Mark Zulik. And I would assume you've talked about this and would like that? Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind. I, you wouldn't mind or you yes, would like no, to? Yes, no, sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm open to it. I'll second that nomination for him. Any comments? Public? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thanks. So in the past, just to let you know, we've paid for um, the lunch for, for when you go down there, and we've paid for travel expense, meaning mileage, for when you go down there to Oroville. Huh? Oroville? But if you want to, if you want to pack all that ways, I'm just letting you know that's what, that's what the past yeah. history has done. But if okay. you want to pack a lunch, well, that would be fine too. Um, I got to worry about that. Yes, Bill. Maybe the lunch. Not the that's, lunch. that's what. That's In the what past, the, the district has also paid for. The, we've had it here in this district that goes around the, the annual meeting and pays for the expenses if any of the directors want to go. That's right. And then also for the actual meetings <coughs> when they take place where they have a dinner meeting, and sometimes those have been in Oroville, then all the directors that want to go would have their Able dinners to go. paid for. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's we, been mm. just to make okay. sure everybody understands. Yeah, Thank we you, Bill. encourage the directors to go for the annual meetings. Well, will we be... general membership meetings and I always send out yes. emails all the board mm -hmm. members. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Okay, 11, committee reports. We only have one. Yes? And water conservation, I don't see. Ann has done the minutes for the water conservation. Yep. So, and she, they're in the. Yep, they're in here. Thing. We've read them. <laughs> so, is there are there any, any questions, questions on them? The no, if there are no questions, uh, number 12, board education. Well, I got to Oops, I'm sorry, Bill. Something isn't. Um, today, PID has collected $1,000 in donations. Uh, actually, some warm farm material was worth $240, and they didn't charge us for transport. Ward, because Ward arranged it. Nice. One of our committee members, public. Oh, nice. PID, uh, so it's up to it's 1100 the materials. 1200 and something. Uh, 1200 and somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Ward has indicated the Garden Club may add some more money to it. Um, what's, what's the target on that? What would you like? What is the... The target is we're trying to get as much done. We've rototilled it now. And, um, no, but I mean for uh, donations. What are you looking for? Oh, 3000 we can get. Oh, okay. If we can pay right. most of the expenses for the garden. Mm -hmm. We'll just see how it turns out. Uh, okay. That was a goal put together by the committee. Um, and then the other things they're talking about, the demonstration garden that... Ann is doing that with the working with Butte College on mm -hmm. getting that door. Um, Ward and Mike are on the examples of written brochures. I think somebody else has brought some stuff, if I'm not mistaken. And we're going to have ground covers and that sort of thing. And I did plant some um, <coughs> seeds of native grasses in a small pot. Um, and then conservation and packets that, for new pea. ID customers received also a board illustrating or which Ann is doing is heading the work on that a demonstration board and Mike is involved in it talking about having a 
silent salesmen with brochures in season that would be gone in the rainy seasons because they'd get no get wet. It wet. Um, so there it is on the bow, new customers going out in the mail or handouts to new customers as they sign up for water. I don't. That has to come and get permission from you guys on board um, and reaching out chamber or what have you. The, the, one of the things I that bothers me a little bit about our committee structure, and I've talked about it before, if you think about uh, it, the committees are just, work, they're the legislative thing, and they work just like committees do in legislatures, and that is the committee saves time from the board on uh, going over details like this garden thing. And then when there's money needed or approvals needed or a change in something, that has to come to the board for their approval. And one of the things that bothered me, I know you guys as administrative, was an administrative committee yeah. had a meeting and nothing's here to tell us what That's you talked about. Because it was closed session and we closed can't divulge session it. and we can't say anything can't about divulge. it. I'm sorry, I probably should. Well, you can put it down as a closed session on Okay, it. it's closed session. Yeah, no, what I mean, this is, this so is we know. part of what your job yeah. is, is to inform the board as a general thing on what is being done. If we had anything to say, we would have put it in there. Bill, I apologize for that. That's my fault. I will try to correct that. But, um, and some of the other committees at times, it seems like, has done the same thing. In other words, had meetings, and then later on the information came up. This was a problem with the old board. This is things were done quietly, and all of a mm. sudden, boom, there was an elephant. And later on, finding out that the committee had largely decided on spending money and doing things. And mm. so this is why you guys think I'm paranoid. Well, I'm getting a lot better than I used to be. Committees, can't, <laughs> committees remember, they that's, can't spend anything. That's refre yes, know. Re board, refreshing <laughs> to hear, Bill. <laughs> Thank you. Refreshing. That's all. That's it. We will try to make everything as transparent as possible. <laughs> oh, okay. Don't mind. And, and just to go back, okay. I mean, as much as I love the guy Flesher, uh, one of his things was to be as thorough as possible in his uh, reports mm -hmm. to the rest of the board and to the staff that was here in the public. Because you and he was, he was, he would grin while he's talking. Um, he had a tone about his voice that was uplifting. Yeah. He wanted people to be encouraged about yeah. the good stuff we were doing. Yeah. And, and, and I've tried to do that. I know Bill's tried to do it. I, I think it's neat when you can go home from here and say, you know, I learned something at uh, the director's meeting tonight about what this other committee is doing. It's really cool what's going on there. Just a comment to your spouse. Uh, that yep. kind of stuff. When you're in line at ACE and you're yep. just chatting away and say, man, you ought to see what's going on up at PID. <laughs> that gets us, that gets us a lot of good, good vibes in the community when we can do that, you know? Thank you. Thank you. Yep. I do have one question, uh, Bill and Ann. What about signage, future signage out there? You can have signs because, well, you, you kind of touched on it. Do you have somebody to do that? Do you know? Um, we're, lo we're looking at, um, so far, it, the companies that do botanical and park type signs okay. are, are on the internet. So I have three right now that are okay. Because I have a friend that does signs, and almost certainly he would do it free. Now, oh. He's a sign painter. Uh, oh, this is like, but this is different. Yeah, you know, like the staked signs that say uh, the Latin yeah, name and the correct. common name of the plants. Oh, okay. And but there, but if you, if you, there is going if to be you, a big board. I was just going to say, ultimately, if you have something out front that's going to draw people's attention, just to. Demonstration garden mm -hmm. or whatever. It's going to have a metal archway yeah. over the entrance. Okay. But the existing right. sign, I think, is coming down. Right. The one that was put up, yeah. that's Correct. temporary. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you mm -hmm. um, board education. Anne. Okay. So this is the last module um, of, the, of my um, leadership academy conference that I attended in <coughs> July. So this is the last time you'll hear about this from me. Um, this last module was on finance. It was the most technical and it was the longest. And that's why it has two pages. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and there's uh, some handouts besides my notes and the actual slideshow presentation. There's a couple of handouts. One is like a um, snapshot um, financial report for ABC district. And then the other is an audit for that same district. And there's questions in the workbook and that address that and go back and forth. Also a very handy glossary of terms in the back. 
that you'll find useful. Okay. I didn't know half, what half of them meant. Okay. And um, from this report today, I, uh, what I'd like to talk about is the audit, the annual audit, because we're going to be doing our annual audit. And one of the things they stressed um, at the Academy was that it should, that it's reviewed and accepted by the board publicly, which we do, but also um, maybe presented to the board uh, with the auditor present so that we can ask questions. And that was a good, a good thing for transparency, but also either have the auditor present when it's presented or create an ad hoc committee so that at least two board members are talking to the auditor can, fill, can uh, field the questions that we might have. And in the, that module I gave you, there's several um, sample questions that you might want to ask an auditor. Hmm. So that was the last one, guys. Our auditor's always present. I have, it's a requirement. Okay, <clears throat> so that's good. Ke curious, Kevin, have you taken this outline that Ann has <coughs> presented us with and uh, sort of held it up in front of our financial to see how how it measures I mean, how, how they match. I, I mean, some of the ratios I, I should probably do on our current financials. I mean, one of them, the top one red flag indicators, financial <coughs> indicators, was uh, dr dwindling reserves. I mean, <laughs> yeah, we went through yeah, that, yeah we course. did go through that. You know, no. is it is it unplanned? No, it yeah. was planned. But it was it was kind of a could have used more money there, <laughs> right? Yeah. But, but I would just kind of homework for you if you have time. Absolutely. It would be kind of nice for you to go through and answer these questions. How sure. how I do we it. how do we rate with what Ian has outlined here? Yeah, I can definitely yeah. do that. That'd be kind of nifty to see. I think. Yeah, I think I think a lot of them we rate pretty well. Yeah, pretty on. well. Um, and then there's some that I mean I think we're recovering from. So uh, yeah, I can definitely do that. Yeah. One of the biggest uh, one of the biggest hurdles I know from a financial aspect of of government agencies right now, and it talks about as actuarial calculations of pension <coughs> plans. We have we have no pension plan, mm -hmm. so our our financial and the health of our finances look so much better than there's than many 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 agencies out there, even quasi government agencies. Uh, because of that decision by the board long, long time ago. So uh, that, that right there is a big pat on the back for the district on the financial side of, of things. So. And, yep. and kudos to you. Yeah. Well, no. I mean, that was a decision made way yeah, back prior then. to so I, yeah, I but think you're the one that's having yeah. to perform yeah. according to those guidelines. And, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, always, it's always a challenge. I mean, I, but I think that we've met that challenge, and I think this board shows that they have fiscally, uh, uh, are fiscally conservative and are very interested interested in the finances and getting to understand it, and I think that's very key. <clears throat> one, sure, would one, love, sure would love to see that $30 million reserve. Though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and one thing I always want to point and, and reiterate, ask questions. Always ask questions. If you don't understand it, ask the question, because the, one, the boards that get in the most trouble are the ones that never ask the mm. questions. How I don't long think is the auditor here when, when they come? I mean, they're only here for four days on site. Yeah. Four days. Yeah, and okay. then they go back and then they do, uh, they consolidate and then they'll present to the board. Okay. It doesn't appear as though this board's ever going to be shy about asking questions. That's so. good. <laughs> I will never be shy from answering them. Thank you. Okay, director's comments. Mr. Kellogg. No comments. Um, productive meeting. Mark? No comment. No, I just skipped right over and went to you. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I just want to say uh, I haven't been on the board for, for a year yet, but uh, it, we were here since February. And uh, I've enjoyed myself, and um, I, I'm really happy the direction we're going. Like Bill said that uh, before. You've made that comment before. And I just want to thank uh, everybody here on the board. I want to thank uh, all the employees, and I also want to thank the public. And... Uh, I just, uh, I think we're going in the right direction, and, I, and I'm pleased, and uh, I just hope everybody can have a great holiday and a, you know, safe, <laughs> safe holidays, and uh, we'll see you next year, so. And that's my you. comment, too, is Merry Christmas. Have everyone a blessed Christmas yep. and a yep. prosperous New Year. And thank you for mentioning something about the pipe replacement, because that's one of the things I'd still like to try to continue to prioritize, so I'm glad you said that. Thank you. And yes, indeed, Merry Christmas, all of you. Thank you for saddling me with this responsibility. I appreciate it. I'll try to do well. If you have any questions, comments, negative, positive, let me know. Uh, and we are adjourned. At, oops. No.
And now yes, we're, no, we're, we're adjourning. <laughs> we, we can't leave. We, we are adjourned at uh, 9.52, and we will reconvene for the annual meeting of the Board of Directors, Paradise Irrigation District, Public Facilities Finance Corporation. Mr. Uh, order. Mr. Roll Manager. Call. Present. Here. President Here. Vice President Jacobson. Here. Director Keller. Present. And approval of minutes. Have a chance to review them, yes? We need approval. I move to approve the minutes from the January 18, 2017 meeting. I'll second them. It seems nobody else is going to. All those in favor say aye. 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 In opposition? No. Uh, public participation? None? Okay. And then I'll just Kevin. give you a, an understanding of what, what this is. It's, a, it's actually a corporation that was established by Paradise Irrigation District to issue debt. And the way, the way that attorneys got this um, kind of created was that this corporation was able to issue certificates of participation to f finance a capital project without having the vote of the full public. And so they were able to issue bonds without having to go to a full vote of the public to save the district money. And what the, the, the corporation does is they actually take asset ownership and then the PID leases it back over the same terms as the debt that was just issued. So it's a flow through kind of entity to allow Paradise Irrigation District to issue bonds without full voter approval. And there we are. And so we have to have this meeting every, every year because that keeps us in good standing with the state to have our corporation still in good standings. And so that's why we continue to have. Would it be a, a benefit to continue the corporation <laughs> even when the certificates of yes. participation expire? Correct. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to continue the corporation because when we are ready to issue new debt, the corporation is in good standing. We're ready to rock and roll. If not, then we have to go out for articles of incorporation and reestablish ourselves <laughs> as a corporate. So. Okay. Very good. We have met our oblig annual obligations. <laughs> Unless there are questions from you. Director's comments. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't have that. <laughs> you missed on that one. Uh, we are adjourned at uh, 9.55. Good night, y'all. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Merry Christmas.